Thrash emerged from the underground in the early 80s and was much more extreme than metal styles that came before it, containing graphic lyrics about warfare, human suffering, and even serial killers. But before I explore the evolution of thrash, I want to know what kind of people were inspired to create this music. We were just living out our twisted fantasies that were illegal to carry out in real life. <laughs> so now a day goes by, I don't want to kill somebody. Hey, we're here. We're doing it. Howdy, banger pals. How's everybody feeling? We're back. We're back. We're at the table. We're at the table. Sam's back. Hey. I, I was solo last time. Yeah. We That's dragged cool. him back in. We had to we had to entice him with like a piece of cheese, and that piece of cheese is talking about thrash albums. Very easy to get him yeah. back in when you when you offer that up. It wasn't a difficult sell. No. Yeah. How we feel. So we're here. How's the chat feeling? Everybody seems to be going crazy already. This is going to be a uh, a spicy one, certainly. We have we're we're doing things a little differently. So uh, so you know it's gonna there's gonna be some there's gonna be some there's gonna be some feelings hurt. There's gonna be some there's gonna be some hard decisions to make. There's gonna be you know there's gonna be some. Dare blood we say on the table. blood on the table, blood on the table from some horns that are maybe locked, uh, and then hey, just kicking things off. Uh, Kuda Bucks with the sub, Lysurgical Steel with a hundred bits, uh, and Coffee Beats Tea with a hundred bits. Uh, hey, so chat, how are we feeling? Where's everybody coming in from? I've seen I've seen a couple. We got we got Yorkshire representing. Yeah, we've got a couple UK, of Yorkshire boys. You uh, UK reps. Uh, some people are saying my mic is low, Craig. So that maybe we can work on that. We'll work on that. Blaine had better come in with a left field pick, says Vlad Damien. I love being, I love being Mr. Left Field. I love being the weird guy. Well, we've got a different format. We've got a slightly different format for this one. We're trying out, <laughs> um, and so I think there's, yeah, there's going to be some. There's gonna be some fun. There's gonna be some fun spiciness. Some yeah. nice twists. Lake uh, Titicaca. Lake Titicaca. Cologne, Germany. Chile. Nashville. Nice. This is my favorite part, actually. Just seeing, just seeing a just list seeing of places. Seeing where people are, are 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 joining from. Seeing where people are joining from, and seeing where people are gifting subs from, like John oh, Grove gifting the sub to Saf Mystic. Eye on the TV, and Dear Beer Kaiser coming in with a hundred bits each, and Aragon the Platypus gifting the sub to Aaron Quiz, Aaron's Quiz, or Aaron Squiz. Either way. He gifted a sub to him, and we appreciate it. Blaine Mike Hot, Sam Mike Cold. That's just also kind of a description yeah. of uh, of our general. You don't need to go there. <laughs> Damn, John Girl from Norway. Butt lovers in my basement. Um, Saskatoon, eh? Oh, we got a Saskatoon pal. Yes. Mr. 12 Ounces of Loneliness. Well, Saskatoon, understandable. It's a cold, cold flat place. Finland, Dubai. Per same from Finland. Riva from oh. du Dubai, nice. Mm. Vlad Damien, Vlad Sam. Damien. I like the flack. <laughs> Sam oh, getting all the flack. It's not him, it's his pack. It's his mic pack. Just flack, flack away. His mic pack. Uh, <laughs> Kuda Bucks, Blaine Mike hot, Sam Mike off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just you I just lean over I'll just lean over and whisper and yeah, your yeah. my mic will pick up both of us right you should turn my mic off here I'm moving it that might have been a little bit noisy there yeah damn that. Captain Wetbeard with the 600 bits that's a that's a that's a nice little gift for us thank you so much Captain Wetbeard child in tiny hmm. that's a random reference for uh oh is that a oh is that a username yeah uh, hey, Child in Time is a username, and he's coming in from East Los Angeles, eight down the street from the original Metallica house. East L.A. I was just in L.A. It's nicer weather than Toronto. Killer shirt, Damn. Sam. Thanks. Well, you know, it's a thrash episode. It's a I'm thrash always, episode. I'm always trying to come at it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I like to be Lockhorns adjacent, Lockhorns adjacent. in my t-shirt Yeah. Well, well. Slightly off the nose. 
slightly off the nose, but what's not off the nose is I on the TV with 420 bits. Very kind. John Grow coming in with 100 bits. Beard of Hour with the Prime subscription and Metal Esquire with 100 bits. Just a reminder, uh, yeah, if you see that, what does Prime subscription mean? If you have Amazon Prime and, uh, you know, any other services, if you got Prime Video, you got Prime for shipping, whatever, you get Twitch Prime for free. And what that means is you get some perks on the platform. And one of the perks is you can toss a sub once a month at whoever you feel like. If you do it to us, we just get money. It costs you no money. And if you don't use it, money just stays in Amazon. So let's get as much money out of Amazon into here as possible. Uh, use your Prime sub. There's probably a, if you've got it, there's like a thing here that you can click. Bona Bornai, gifting the sub to Jason French. Thanks so much. All right. Yeah. What that's do we a, do? That's a little bit off the top. That's a little bit off the top, but... Blind Whale 74 from Vancouver. There you go. I get that reference. Same year. Bronster Monster. Yeah. Hopefully Testament gets some respect. You're getting ahead of yourself. You're getting excited of yourself. Uh, Flying Whales, thanks for the follow. Nick Beard of Hour, nice to see you with the Lemmy emote. And, uh, all right. All right. all right, we have an exciting guest. We have a guest I'm very excited about. We've only had exciting guests. We've been we've been really crushing <laughs> we've it with only guests. Had guests that we're excited about. We, 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 we've oh, been crushing boy. it with guests. We've been crushing <laughs> it with guests for everything, if I do say so myself. So without further ado, he's here. It's just let's get him. Let's get him in the chat, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Blake from Power Trip joining us here to talk about thrash metal. Blake, how you doing? Good. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. We're good. We got a Blaine and we got a Blake. Yeah, I'm outnumbered. <laughs> uh, Blake, I like your room there. You've got some like. I'm trying to make out. Is that a cheap trick poster? Yeah, you got nice. cheap trick right there. Yeah, it's like a. Yeah. Classic. And what's the one yeah. next to it? The, this the is the, this is the replacements. Let it be. Oh. Oh, okay. nice. Okay. And you, your head is in front of another one. I'm just spying, just spying on your walls. <laughs> yeah, yeah for, I, got, I got a lot. That's cool. For a guy that doesn't uh, live stream, you really have a room set up that looks like you <laughs> live stream from it. I know. I was just thinking that when I was setting it up. I was like, I should do more of this because you can't even see over here. There's a whole wall of tapes and stuff. So yeah. this is the uh, this is the office. You got the stereo. Is that a Jackson? Yeah, I got the, some Pioneer stuff, some 70s yeah. stereo. This is yeah. my mirror room, so all my nice. gear, my guitars over here, you know, everything. So, I've got a yeah. Pioneer tuner at home, too, and uh, my dad had one, and so I just wanted to have one, too. They're sweet. Very warm. Yeah. Very warm. They, 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 just sound, they just sound really good, and it's like... You know, some people make a big deal about audio and, and how big of a difference this and that, but with the analog, you know, the 70s stuff, it's just, I don't know what it is, but it adds this whole warmth and makes everything sound fucking amazing, so. Yep. Uh, yeah. Uh, agreed. Yeah. And you're in Fort Worth, right? Yep. Fort Worth, Texas. How are things in Fort Worth today? Fort Worth's good. It's yeah. a little gray. It's starting to get a little humid, get a little warmer, but it's been uh it's not it's not summer yet. When summer happens and then it, you know it gets it's bad down here, hundreds and stuff like that. So just yeah, enjoying the last, last few weeks of uh, decent weather. I feel I've been in a few Texan malls in the summer where I wish I had my Canadian parka because they yeah. crank the AC <laughs> so hard down there. I'm like man. Yeah. I can't find yeah, the, I can't find the sweet spot here. Yeah, that's the that's the good thing about Texas, I will say, in the summer <clears throat> is that you know, at least everything's perfectly air conditioned. So, you know, when you go to California or the West Coast, a lot of places, they don't have AC everywhere, so like, you know, if it's really fucking hot for one week, you're just sweating all the time. Yeah. Even when you're inside, you know, so. Great. Yeah, that's that's a good thing. We're we're, we're prepared down here. Well, now that we got the weather... Now and that we got the weather... We got a good joke from Man of War's uh -huh. new wave of British heavy metal. Called Ibanez, plays a Jackson instead. That's pretty fucking metal. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm never going to live that down. No. <laughs> I mean, oh, it's, it's when they see me, they go, why isn't he playing Ibanez? And I'm just like... <laughs> 
Man. No, I mean, <laughs> you can't. You couldn't play an Ibanez because then everyone would be like, "Oh, that guy. He's just the yeah. son of John Ibanez. He didn't have to work to get on there." <laughs> yeah, like if people would still have something to say. So it's just the. Uh, it's even worse when you go to Guitar Center because you know you you hand them your card or whatever, and then they're like, "Oh, I know they do that." Uh, <laughs> Did you like the, the Michael Bolton thing from Office Space, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, is that really your name? You know, yeah. you're just like, yes. And they yeah. want to have a really long conversation with you about your yeah. name and... I celebrate Ibanez's entire catalog. <laughs> yeah. You think there'd be, an, endor you think there'd be an endorsement there for you, though? I mean, yeah. right? Come I mean, on. if they hit me up, and, if they hit me up and, and wanted to make me, like, a really cool custom guitar... Uh, maybe we could talk about it, but I'm a, I'm a Jackson guy. You know, I gotta, I gotta show some love to my yeah. guys over at Jackson. So. Well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get messed up in this. But Ibanez, if you're watching, if you, Ibanez, if you're watching, this is a great opportunity. Let's see that. It's like, get, this is a great opportunity right crack, in front of Crack us. that wallet. Let's see <laughs> some bucks. Let's see some bucks. <laughs> Yeah. And speaking of seeing some bucks, Metal Multiball with 100 bits and Mess Life with 100 bits. Nice to see y'all coming out. We got some new followers too with Nathan Pruitt and Viva La Revolution 2032. Uh, should yeah. we? Should we? We could maybe. Well, I actually want to know, Blake, because we've never met and never chatted, but uh, given that we're talking about thrash metal. Did you grow up as a young individual listening to thrash? Was it a more recent uh, part of your life? How did how did that all go? Um. Well, recent. I don't know. We we you know we started the band in two thousand eight. So. <laughs> Sorry. What I mean is, when did you start yeah, listening? Just, when did you start listening? Started. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I think I was probably. I mean, I was a teenager. Uh, probably, hmm, probably 13 or 14 when I first started really listening to it, I would say at the earliest, because, um, you know, I just didn't, it wasn't really, uh, it wasn't really until I got into hardcore to where I started exploring all the different offshoots, you know, so like from hardcore, we got into crossover and you know, all the crossover bands like Suicidal and yeah. SOD and Chromags and Leeway and stuff, and then um from there we just the next logical step was getting really into thrash so um it was probably it wasn't until then when i really started getting into it but um yeah i was probably like you know early teens yeah and was there like a are we getting ahead of ourselves a come to jesus moment was there a come to jesus thrash record which sort of you brought know, you brought you from the crossover fully into the more metallic realms. Yeah, well, um, you know, for for us from the hardcore scene, um, I think anybody would really get into this album. But I mean, I have it right here. Best wishes, uh, the second album from the Chromags. Okay, that was really that was honestly this album probably single handedly started our band because. You know, that was like the first record um, I bonded with the guys over, you know, talked to Riley about, um, among others, you know, more like hardcore and crossover stuff from, from New York in the 80s. But like that record, I mean, I, I think the first time I, heard, I put that on and I heard the first song, I was just like, I still feel that way when I listen to it, you know? It's just something about that song just is like, I mean, it's like, you know, Angel of Death or master of puppets or whatever you know what i mean it's it's to me it's that good and it's uh i mean it's not quite as uh i don't know what what you would say like maybe not um as accessible in a like anthemic type of way the same way angel of death the master of puppets is you know but it's like right. just the furious riffs and like fucking everything about it is just like mostly everybody i know that you know has heard that record always talks about that song but really the yeah. whole album but that song in general that was Probably the first moment I was like, "Whoa, like, I want to do that," you know. Yeah. And I still, I still do, you know. So it's. Yeah, it's, well, uh, it's, that's that's just, interesting. I mean, you came, you came into, you came to thrash from the the hardcore side. Uh, I mean, for yeah. me, for me, it was the other way. But that's in the sense that I came from the the sort of maiden priest side of things. But 
you know, and I guess that's really as we've commented age. so many times. <laughs> <laughs> it's age. Yeah. It's just, yeah. We're only if everybody's saying, like an Blaine's instant. already making age jokes. <laughs> so uh, I'm feeling I'm feeling it right now. But yeah. Where are the ages over here? What are we, what's our? What are we looking at here? Four hundred and two. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the thirty-six pocket. So yeah, I definitely had I definitely had some some Chromax experiences in my life. Uh, went down to New York City to see them uh, at the Knitting Factory in my early twenties. That was a very very wild show. Very, I mean, you know, you really seeing Chromax live is you really kind of understand the kind of staying power of that band because that is a band that really just yeah. the shows are wild the, the the energy the 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 aggression is really like you know it's it's one of those bands that really gets talked about by a lot of metal dudes because it is it is like you know it, it it's it's hardcore but it's so aggressive it's so just violent uh uh, uh and it really kind of gives you like a metal you're it's metal. It's metal. It's metal in spirit as much as it is punk in spirit as well. Yeah. Inky, Chromax, you are in the show. Exactly. Like a Chromax show is not about a band performing to you. A Chromax show is about a bunch of people going crazy in a, in a room while a band plays to them. I'm 48. So <laughs> you I, if you do the, the metal math, I was, I was 12 in 1986 which probably, and I'm, I'm blowing the lead a little bit here, was probably the most important year in yeah. metal for probably myself and a lot of people. So you can imagine, you know, what, what that was like. So yeah, 48, how old are you? I'm 30. Ah, young man. Young man. <laughs> I, got friend, I got friends that are 48, actually, so 49. So. Yeah. Don't worry. That's right. You're not, you're not old to me. So you're around old people. <laughs> oh, I'm around old people all the time. You're old, you're old person adjacent. <laughs> yeah, old yeah. by proxy. Old by proxy. Yeah, uh, sure. yeah, well, that's cool. That's interesting. I mean, yeah, it was the marriage of hardcore and, uh, and new wave of British heavy metal, right? As the story goes, as yeah. many have told, including us, that that's really what it represented. So it kind of brought together a lot of people. Yeah. You know, I grew up with a lot of guys that skateboarded. I didn't skateboard, but I'm old enough where I was, I witnessed, we've talked about this, the transition from BMXing to skateboarding. Yeah. Like I was a little too young to BMX, but it was like I witnessed like the whole, the migration. And uh, yeah, everyone liked Master of Puppets. Everybody liked Master right? of Puppets. I mean, yeah. I guess on everybody liked Master of Puppets, that might be. Is a that a segue? segue? Hey, is that a professional hey. a professional Twitch segue uh, to getting into maybe maybe where we start talking about, here we go, woo, child in time, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think segue could be our thing. Segue? Like Smartless? Do you know Smartless? Smartless? The podcast? No. Bye. Don't know smartless. Okay. We'll, 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 we'll park we'll, that. We'll, we'll park we'll that. We'll put that. a pin I in think that. I think there's something there. Uh, we do have some first thrash yeah. albums in the chat, though. I on the TV saying, I got into both hardcore and thrash at the same time. My uncle introduced me to Megadeth and Bad Brains within a car ride together. That's a, that's a good uncle move. That's a, that's a, that's a great uncle story. Uncle that's life. the uncle story you want to hear. Aussie Rules. My first thrash album was Live in Budokan by S.O.D. in 93 or 94. It changed my world because I knew I was no longer listening to stuff like Ozzy and Alice Cooper, and it was heavier than anything else I was listening to at the time um and okay now we're getting in it now we're getting into some metallica arguments so yeah, so yeah so let's let's pull we're up the board in. let's pull up the board let's start let's start chatting let's start let's start going let's we start gotta start locking. we gotta start uh we gotta start we've got okay okay so right. we have a we have a man we have a man who was on the ground we have we have a man who was on the ground at the time yeah yeah, I guess I was. Again, I mean, maybe similar to our last time I was here with, you know, we got into the whole death metal thing, you know. If you're 12 in 1986, it's, you, you're, you're there when it's all actually 
happening. Like I remember, like I was too young for, I was actually too young, believe it or not, Blaine Smith, <laughs> for like early priest, right? And of course like Zeppelin, Purple and Sabbath, they were like, I remember them kind of sounding old to me. Yeah, old, uh, old dad like rock music already. from the past, as I was discovering uh, this stuff. And of course, MTV and Much Music were raging, and so you know, pop was everywhere, music videos were everywhere. But um, yeah, '86, big year. '86, big very year. big year. Where do we want to start? How do we want to do this? You just want me to like just to do it? So you, the chat might notice. The, the chat, you might notice. There's a slight difference in uh, in the board. Uh, you know, we uh, we cover a lot of stuff, and and you don't necessarily want to divide it into early and uh, early and late because sometimes you want to talk about both of them in one. You know, because people will come out to shout about Metallica, and then we get to talk about some newer bands carrying the torch. So we've got Sam will be here for the first half of the stream giving us essential early. We're going to try and pick five of the essential early bands, and then we're going to try and pick five essential modern bands. We'll have a legend that kind of gets, uh, you know, the kind of free free square in the middle of the bingo, the, uh, the, the you know, that we just have to include and kind of gets included everywhere. And yep. that's how we're going to do it this time. So, Sam, I, you know, classic, classic uh, uh, legend, your legend pick. Yeah, the legend's easy for me. Yep. But let me just do a little bit of a long-winded preamble. Oh, here we go. We got a Sam. I mean, Sam it, you know, there, you know, I actually all I do is preambles. Yeah. Right. Uh, don't, not good at getting to the point. <laughs> but in preparing for today's discussion, it dawned on me that you know, okay, one could argue that thrash metal started in 1983 uh, with Kill 'Em All and Show No Mercy. So we'll put that stake in the ground. And what I found interesting is when we talked about doing this split pre-2000 and post-2000 is actually being 2022, it's actually a greater amount of time since 2000 than before. So my point here is what? If you go to a lot of the essential lists for thrash metal, it's rare you will find an album post-2000. And yet at the same time, Many of us, myself included, who kind of advocate for the vibrancy and stamina and ongoing vitality of heavy metal music, and yet we're all kind of, we're still kind of stuck in the past. So I don't know what that is. It's me kind of spouting off about, like, maybe we should start giving a little bit more love and laying down some, 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 some claims to some of the newer records being... Uh, essential. Anyway, it's a pitch for you. It's a pitch for my. It's half a pitch of the for part two, around. but I had to get it out early because it's fresh. I've been thinking about it, because yeah, you go to the lists out there, louder, Kerrang, Loudwire, they're all pretty, uh, pretty old lists. <laughs> but anyway, so on that note, let's 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 do go with some old music. Um, Slayer, Rain and Blood, for me, indisputably, there is no argument. I will die on all mountains uh, when it comes to um, what is, I think, the most legendary album in the history of thrash metal. I think you know, there's some extremely close seconds from a couple of Metallica albums, which people are talking about, we will already, talk about, yeah. but I mean, there's nothing I can say about Rain and Blood that hasn't already been said before. By you. Apart from by me. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. When you're 12 and you put on that slab of vinyl after going down to your local record store, I mean, it's hard to go f anywhere from there. Uh, yeah. So, that's, that's, that's mine. Blake, you, what are your thoughts on that record? For you, on that record, um, well, yeah, I, I was kind of over here preparing to get asked the same question as to uh, get the first spot right there, and uh, yeah, I can't argue with that. I was gonna say Rain and Blood. I just think, I mean, I wasn't there, obviously, but um, for me, for me, it's like that's everything. You know, that's like writing the book on future genres. Like, I mean, to me, 
death metal and stuff like that. I mean, what would what would that be without the stuff that Dave Lombardo did and all the, you know, fast picking and all that stuff, the, even the, the vocal phrasing, the lyrics, everything. I mean, it was just, you know, I don't know how you can really argue with that one, but obviously there's very respectable arguments, like you said, for, for Metallica and stuff, very close seconds. Um, it's really hard to pick. I don't, I don't, I don't want it to seem like I'm uh, putting down any other records because they're phenomenal, but uh, I would, I would have to agree with you. I think Rain of Blood's the number one for me. Blaine? I mean, you know, again, it's one of those things where the, I think kind of the thing that, that, that makes Slayer kind of up there in the legend is just that Metallica had was kind of working with themes that had been worked with a lot. Slayer kind of really brings like a, a blueprint for m more... M uh, Metallica brought a blueprint for like Metallica, whereas Slayer really brought a br blueprint for metal as a genre with this record, you know? A lot, a lot more of the... There's there's a lot more of just that, that kind of influenced the whole all of metal instead of just thrash. So that kind of is something that really can help you kind of tr transcend to a legend, uh, you know, just really bringing really bringing heaviness and evil and scare your parents in a in a true fashion, not in a you know you know the the really kind of make everyone that was saying oh my God Alice Cooper and Dee Snider are trying to lure our children to the devil. It's like oh well you want someone to lure your children to the devil well let's go yeah. let's go full out extreme imagery you know yeah, really really, don't look at us you know yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah and I, I think not to get too artsy fartsy about it but i will given the opportunity uh it's like form and content right i think what makes that record again it's been said before by me and many others was not just everything you've mentioned blake but like the the just the form of it in its length, in its compactness. Like it was kind of an artistic state. It's a, it was a singular, it's a singular artistic statement, I think, within Slayer's own catalog. And I think across the genre, like no one dared go and touch that. Yeah. Like no one else stepped up and said, we're going to do whatever it is, 28 and some odd seconds, and we're going to do it like with no gaps between the songs. I mean, I'm probably, someone probably did it, but it was like, it, it's, it's sort of sacred. Like no one did it again. Yeah. Like no one touched it. And I think that that sort of says a lot and we'll get into the Metallica thing, but the two albums we're probably gonna talk about the most with Metallica, I'm jumping the gun here, is that you can make the argument that those two albums are kind of quite similar in their structure, in the song selection, in the kind of pacing of it. So they kind of, I kind of feel like they decided to do the same album, just make it sound better uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, but anyway, that's what I think makes art. Rain and Blood for me is like a work of art on a level that isn't achieved very often in metal. And uh, in fact, it might be the most singular piece of art. And I think it has a lot to do with the fact that, and I know I've mentioned this, but Slayer didn't touch it <laughs> either. It's almost like, we're not gonna fucking do that again. And I think, I remember when South of Heaven came out and I was like, it's kind of slow. <laughs> what the fuck happened? Apart from yeah. Silent Scream and Ghosts of War, it was like, this is different. Like the first song is like long and kind of slow, yeah. like Hella Waits was. So Local. it's like Local. they kind of yeah. did, they did <laughs> Rain of Blood and then it's just like, okay, let's not try and recreate that. Which I think over time, although it disappointed the fuck of a, out of us when it first came out, because <laughs> we all want a Rain of Blood too, as the years and decades have passed, it's like, oh, that was really smart for you guys not to try and touch that. Yeah, yeah we've got some interesting comments in the chat. Uh, uh, we've got, uh, we've got, uh, uh, we've got a, we've got a good one. Uh, uh, Slayer sound uh, like what Venom look like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, uh, I, I very much enjoy. Um, and um, 
going back, trying to grab another one. Uh, Ham of Truth, MOP is tighter, more compositionally nope. accomplished. It's in the Library of Congress. Uh, Rain and Blood is pure, raw, and visceral. Two sides of the coin for the absolute pinnacle. So uh, maybe some people are trying to sneak two records up there. Um, and, 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 and context is everything here, and I've said it before. I can't tell you how simple yet genius the concept was of putting the whole album on one side of a cassette. It may sound like so. Speaking, yeah, yeah. I like mean. so what? I can't tell you what it what it was like to play the album and then turn it over and it starts at the beginning again. It was like it was like fucking a drug. You just kept turning the fucking thing over. <laughs> it's not like you turned it over and it was like, okay, criminally insane, part two, which of course discloses the fact that I bought it on vinyl and then bought it on cassette. Of course, like a lot of us did because we needed to put it in the fucking Walkman. Yeah, um, need to have it but in I the can't, car. But I can't tell you how groundbreaking and fucking exciting that was. You turn the tape over and Angel of Death would play again. Anyway. So Blake, as a as a tape man, yeah, you've got you've got quite the tape collection behind you there. Uh, uh, well, those are CDs. These, the tapes are all over here. I can't really move my computer because it's all plugged into all this shit. But there's a ton of tapes over there. So I have, I, I pulled out a handful for this, uh, specifically for this, um, to show everybody. Or when or when we when we start getting in the, uh, getting past the number one spot, you know, we'll we'll uh, I got. I got rain right here, so we got that covered. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, I, I'm I'm a collector. I love I love collecting stuff. How do you, how are you feeling about the 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 tape revival? Has been pretty crazy. Uh, uh, you know, it's it's another one of those great things where metal fans have found something like physical to then really go ham with. Because it's like at first it was just tapes were coming out, and then people were just you'd open it up and it would be like an old like record at home tape, and they've just clearly just thrown them out. Someone bought like a, a tape copy and were cranking them out. Now they're just like the vinyl. You open it up and you've got some like neon green clear tape. Uh, 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 are you are are you kind of into the into the modern kind of tape revival? Are you doing any of that? How do you feel about that? Well, I mean, I, I I like tapes, like older tapes a lot, like the the metal tapes. Something about the tape for metal. I mean, maybe it goes back to, you know, you probably remember back then all my older buddies telling me about the tape trading and all that. So like something about that format, the way it sounds, you know, the kind of the tape compression that it puts on the record, and then like the packaging, the spine, everything, something about that is so metal to me and, and so collectible and cool. Uh, and I, I listen to vinyl a lot too. I mean, obviously vinyl sounds better. The quality is better, you know, tapes can fuck up and, you know, pads can fall off. And so they're not like the greatest thing in terms of archiving music. But, um, if you're a collector, I mean, it's, they're so fun to get cause they just look so cool. And, uh, all the greatest albums were, generally on tape you know yeah i guess anything like 1996 or seven or whenever they stopped probably more like 2000 is when they really started feels like they stopped making tapes for every album but um yeah i just i have fun finding them and, and i try not to buy too many online because i like to just you know i like the chase yeah i want it to last as long yeah. as possible you know? absolutely yeah and then, i mean the fact that they are kind of like not impermanent like you know if you're not careful for, like you could very easily destroy a tape just by enjoying it i adds like a it, instead of making it like oh well this form of media is better because you know it, you know you can listen to it a million times and nothing's gonna happen it adds like a a preciousness to it. It, it 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 kind of can enhance it if you put your mind in the space as opposed to be like a detractor to it where you're like oh man the tape's in really good condition and everything i can really enjoy this it's funny yeah. hearing you guys talk being the 402 year old in the room. Like it makes me realize that I look back, it was all about mobility. Like you bought a cassette because it was the first format that you could walk around and listen to. Like the Walkman was like changed everything. Like that was why we bought cassettes. Yeah. Like you didn't right. buy, I mean, you know, sure. Maybe you couldn't, I mean, lots of really couldn't afford a, 
record player, and blah. I was lucky I had one. It was like, for me, it was like the cassette was the opportunity to like move and listen to music at the same time. And I mean, like would, game changer. The I was a I I, I grew up at the age I am. Just I had after a, we figured out fire. Yeah, <laughs> I had a tape player and then a CD player, and like. CD players, especially when you like the some of the earlier ones. Oh my God! Just like this thing that you have to keep perfectly like yeah. this as you're walking around, yeah. and you go like this, yeah, and it's yeah. skipping and it's losing it. You try and jog with your CD player. I had one of those like G-Shock ones with the, the yeah, the rubber and like the handle and everything. Oh, I remember that. I remember that very well. They had yeah. the ones that had the anti-skip, yeah, uh, you know, thing on it. It's like well. What? Why didn't you just do that from the jump? <laughs> like, <laughs> they killed Skip, you know. They had the underwater ones, you know. They had all sorts of shit. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I love an underwater CD player. It's totally waterproof, man. You can go in the pool with it. You're like, what the <laughs> hell? Yeah. Yeah, but my headphones can't. <laughs> like, oh, so we are getting off target, as the chat points out. That we're was we're fun, getting a, a little, 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 uh, little detour. A little tech history. Blake, Format let's history. get, we've, we've, we've gotten Sam's album, uh, 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 your album. What, what do you think is an absolute essential uh, early uh, thrash album for you? If you're, you know, you're preparing someone, a, you're preparing someone a birthday present. They've asked for, they've asked for five, you know, give me the five essential thrash albums. I'm trying to get into it. What's one that you think absolutely you're putting in there? So this is are we still we're still in the legend category? Well, this is that we we've we've got unless you unless you disagree with legend and you want to get a different legend maybe going, yeah. you could if if you're down with the legend then it's essential yeah, earlies, early. you know, something as, absolutely essential that came out before the 2000s. Oh yeah, okay. Well, that's 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 quite a wide net. Um I mean, essential beyond the, the very obvious stuff that we're gonna that we're gonna get to, um, I mean they're all pretty obvious to me. But uh, bonded by blood, mm -hmm. exit. So you know yeah. for me this is right up there, um, very influential. Uh, you know just Gary, Gary's riffing style, uh, Baylos vocals. It's just a you know it's a little it's a little different and it just has a different. Um, level of intensity um you know it kind of it, it's you know obviously similar to metallica you know very uh inspired by the new wave british heavy metal and all that but they take it to a different place and that's where the bay area thing starts uh along with metallica for me and um yeah there's just so many timeless songs you know and then uh the dueling guitar attack with the h team you know so and obviously kirk hammett where he's where he started he wasn't on this album but you know he was in exodus so can't leave them out of the conversation i'd have to throw that one in there nice yeah yeah i remember i had it on vinyl and it freaked the fucking shit out of my parents <laughs> yeah. and other parents like i remember the cover like was just pretty kind of creepy for its time you know uh so yeah there you go um, yeah, fantastic album, you know, and I mean, I've said it before, like Gary, Holt, something about Gary Holt and his playing and the way he approaches playing the guitar, particularly live, like yeah. he is like, he embodies thrash metal to me. Yeah. Like just, just the way he does what he does is like, that is the thrash metal guitarist like he's just got such fucking attack and his tone like his just his tone is so intense like even on the more recent exodus records it's just like no one sounds like gary you know and it and, and this is weird to say like people who don't listen to metal are like how can you tell the difference between that tone and that tone i know i'm preaching to the choir here but like some of Gary Holt's guitar tone for me is just so defining. Yeah. That's my exit yeah. rant. <laughs> so yeah. what do we got in the chat? 
So we we had a poll. We did a poll about just to confirm Slayer the Legend. Uh, won it in a landslide. Won oh. it in a landslide. Absolutely locked in there. Uh, we've definitely got some Exodus love in the chat too. Heel Beavens love Exodus. Child in Time love me some Exodus. Uh, uh, who else we got? Uh, Ham of Truth though. I'm with Popoff. I find uh, I find this one overrated. I think Exodus went on to do better, which is mm. a little crazy thing to say, um, but. I mean, you're welcome I'll, to your opinion. I'll, I'll, give uh, them, I'll give them the next the next record. Really, they really brought on the next record. I will say, uh, "Bottom of My Blood" is the cla- is 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 the classic. You know, it's like the classic Exodus sound. But "Flesh of the Flesh," man, uh, when Souza, you know, his his debut, that's a pretty insane record. We gotta can't forget about that one. We've got, a nice, game. we've got a nice wholesome comment man from man of war is new wave of british heavy metal i think my favorite thing about these streams is the way everybody gets excited to see an album that they and everybody else have probably listened to multiple times that week it's pretty wholesome it is it I is know. this is a wholesome time we're just here because yeah we want to hear what we want to hear yeah <laughs> this is a lot of confirmation yeah. a lot of confirmation bias yeah. going on here yep <laughs> kebab I call this show confirmation bias agreed gary hold is awesome i want to see him on the bay area strikes back tour with testament exodus and death angel that will yeah I, i'm I, i'm going to that too i think i'm i'm going to a kitchener for it oh yeah like London. somewhere local yeah, yeah they're somewhere not local. To toronto no right. so i gotta go i gotta travel a bit but i'm gonna go hit that go see our buddy alex skolnick yes and also maybe maybe bring something to gary as uh, as Last when he was in town for the uh, we saw the the Slayer final tour, <laughs> the very rough quotations final tour. Uh, 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 Gary, a, a vegan ordered from my wife's vegan restaurant, oh, so that was nice. a nice little wholesome moment. They they texted me and they 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 wrote some stuff on the box, the takeout box for him, drew some pentagrams, sent it off to him. So nice. speaking of wholesome moments, there's a wholesome moment for me. And speaking of other wholesome moments, dear Beer Kaiser, gift and a sub to Man of War is new wave of British heavy metal. Nice. Nice. So, let's just, can we just introduce what will undoubtedly be the biggest debate? Yes, yes. For the pre-2000s yes. uh, thrash metal yes. discussion? Yes, I, I, uh, we don't so need to... it's and or. And or, and this or. This is the and or debate, and I find myself bouncing back and forth between these two. So, as I kind of touched on earlier... I mean, to me, these are these are almost like part one and part two. Like looking back historically, like I think you could make the argument that you know they are they are very similar records, "Ride the Lightning" and "Master of Puppets" in in a lot of ways. In terms of, I'm thinking particularly in terms of the way the album is put together, in terms of song song selection and what song goes first, what song goes second, which you could argue kind of set a template that was followed time and again, unlike Rain and Blood. Um, so, you know, take it for what, for what that is. But there are, there, are, there are many, 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 many merits to actually having both of these albums, I think, here, because of just the sheer impact of the songs that appear on these, on these two records that continue to be the biggest songs in the genre, whether it's Creeping Death, you know, or the track Ride the Lightning, Fight Fire with Fire, or Master of Puppets, Battery, and the list goes on, right? So, you know, we could really get into the weeds on the differences between these records, which we can, but I think it, but the, I think the, the less talked about part is actually how similar these records are setting aside, of course, a certain production uh, style. Um, and, you know, you could arguably say that Master Puppets was reaching a little bit more for the, for the anthemic. Um, but anyway, Blake, would love to hear your thoughts on these two records. Similar, different, would you pick one over the other, et cetera? Wow, it's really hard. I hate, I hate picking. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, to me, Master of Puppets is, is like some people have said in the chat, I mean, it, it's got to be the pinnacle of Metallica's existence because, you know, it takes everything from the first two records and puts it, you know, just 
fires it at a whole new speed and the songwriting is just at the top of the top uh no time wasted um you know they, they're writing the book on a lot of stuff too you know and they've already put out a couple records um it's just yeah i mean to me the the songwriting uh how how timeless it is i mean not, not taking any away from red lightning because there's tons of great songs on there and same with kill them all every record has them but I mean, if I have, if I'm looking at all the albums, uh, it's I've got to take Master of Puppets because it's just yeah. everything is everything is at its zenith, you know, at that, at that point to me. I think Ride Lightning, they're they're getting there, and it's an incredible album. But you know, once you hear Puppets, you're like, oh, there was another level, like there was another place to go, you know? Yeah. Like who, I, who 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 thought they had more places to go, and then they weren't even done after that. But but to me, Puppets, it's like they just they put it all together and they. They're 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 maximizing everything. It's just it's yeah. How, what, what how, can you remind me how many songs are on Ride the Lightning? I think there's just eight. Is there eight as well? I think, it's, I think they they always did like they did eight yeah, on eight. that. I think yeah yeah eight yeah okay yeah Which interesting. Is, that's perfect perfect length for me. Is yeah eight, eight songs. Oh yeah. I know right. Just I think I asked because I like your comment. No time wasted. Like yeah. I feel like. There is no wasted track on Master of Puppets. And I think yeah. I'm with you. I think if I had to choose between the two, I think Master would get would get it by the nose. Because I think mm-hmm. that just all eight songs, and I you know, I th- happen to think that Disposable Heroes and Leper Messiah are Yeah, those are those are <laughs> those are those were two of my favorite songs. I remember when the album came out. They never like they don't they don't live on in the same way as some of the other songs because right. they don't get played live right. as much. But fuck, yeah. those two songs were that side two. Was yeah, side just, two. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. Orion is probably my favorite Metallica song of all time. I'm a bass player. It's like Cliff Burton's high water achievement. I think in terms of yeah. songwriting and ending with Damage Incorporated. Like side two of Master Puppets was just like fucking just perfect almost, you know? So I think you got it. You think you got it. The no time wasted and no discredit. I mean, Ride the Lightning. Yeah, yeah. It might be slightly cooler to like Ride the Lightning. It's cooler. But I'm just going to call that out. (laughs) Like everyone that is saying ride, like there's a little bit of that. Like it's cooler to like Ride the Lightning because it's it's a little dirtier. It's earlier. Yeah. It's a little mm-hmm. less perfect, and I think it gets a bit of the cooler. Uh, it's, the accessibility, it's the accessibility factor, I think. It's like if it's a little less accessible, then it's right. it's cooler to some people, yeah. you know. Like not everybody, maybe not e- not everybody can get into it, you know. As opposed to puppets, it's like that's where everybody was into Metallica. But you know, even Ride the Lightning. I mean, you hear for whom the bell tolls at every fucking football game, and uh, yeah. you know, it's like th- those songs are still still super oh super yeah. Pop. yeah and creeping yeah. death is a masterpiece yeah. right like that that yeah. thing is 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 just completely as lars Allwork would say next level <laughs> next level sam <laughs> um the chat man the chat is this was a definitely a crazy chat uh you had a lot of you know punishment uh both has to be both flying whales master and lightning are both so important but then yeah everybody's but then there was a lot of splits it went up 60 percent for master of puppets with 26 votes uh, uh it was very the, uh, there was a lot of boths as well but yeah uh the master the master fan definitely came out uh 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 Puppets yeah. doesn't have escape on it, Vladis says. Um, but then uh, Shreddy Boy escape is amazing. Uh, Hellion Angel Upper, I think I prefer Ride the Lightning, but Master of Puppets is essential. Coffee Beats Tea, every song on Puppets is awesome. Ride the Lightning has trapped under ice. Harsh words. Uh, I just think, I don't know. Again, beer Kaiser. I knew this was going to be the fucking powder yeah. keg today because <laughs> then, I, I would mean, make the argument that, like, Orion is just a slightly better version of that song than Call of Cthulhu. I would argue that Battery is a slightly different, better version of that song than Fight Fire with Fire. But that's just me. I just think that that's, yeah. And I, I, I think, I think again, I think it's like in the quality of the lesser known tracks, 
the lesser known tracks are better than the lesser known tracks on Ride the Lightning. So I agree. It's, we're talking about an album. And, and man, everybody is all over. Uh, Der Birkheiser Escape is the biggest strike against Lightning. I think it's worse than Puppet's Worst. Eye on the TV, Escape is my all-time fave Metallica track. Wow. I Want Beef, uh, Master slightly beats out Ride the Lightning for me. Damage Inc. is the heaviest song off both albums, but Cthulhu is the best instrumental in, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then we've got, and then we've got some random ones. Aaron Squiz, I'd pick Justice over Lightning, though. What? Um, Brad Seed, our our boy Brad coming in. I found a Kill 'Em All tape in my uncle's room. Grabbed that and life oh, was well, never the same. Just, uncle again, the uncle theme. Zord Dragger just outcooled all of us the by uncle going with theme. Kill 'Em All. Yeah. But yeah, man, a crazy chat uh, over this. Um, I the poll unfortunately decided it. Unfortunately decided it. I of course have to be the cool the the wiener that's trying to be cool and say. Uh, um, uh, definitely ride the lightning for me, but I like I like an I like an album with a little bit of warts. I like uh, I like something a little bit a little bit grimy about an album. I like when I like when you f think something and you're like that's a little the the production's a little rougher and it kind of the roughness balances well with Metallica's already at the time polished songwriting and uh, you know vision for the band. I think it kind of balances at, out. Uh, uh, ben from Newfoundland poll rigged shenanigans. Hey, I I voted in the poll for I voted in the poll for uh, for for ride the lightning. So I and Sam didn't get to vote in the poll. <laughs> so so uh, technically the poll wasn't rigged. I mean technically the poll I tried to rig it for for lightning and it right. and it didn't work. Um, but then but, we're gonna get the reload crowd in on this. But oh. uh, 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 okay, uh, well I'm I'm jumping to the men's room. You guys got to kick off this yeah. next one. Yeah, I'm, so I'm coming back. Me, I'm coming back with some surprises. With some surprises. Okay, so for me, look, we're we're gonna. Uh, hey, hey, uh, there's. We we're this is this is now three records, from America. We're talking about thrash, and we have three American records. Uh, it's time. It's time to jump over. It's time to jump over across the pond there, and uh, and talk a little bit about some German thrash and uh, and hey let's let's quickly toss to a clip we German thrash is better <laughs> who's who's saying that uh, uh, we have uh, uh, yeah just the eye there we go we're not the Hollywood department <laughs> of metal you know it's I think yeah. German metal was always a little bit more Rough, nasty, not a, not as commercial. All the American bands, look like from day one, were the better players, mm. and uh, they had the better productions, mm. you know. But the, the the German sound was always a little bit more punky, a little bit more, a little bit more fire, you know. And uh, mm. I think uh, we never wrote songs to be like make commercial music. We wrote songs because we were pissed off. So. There is, there is a, you know, uh, uh, out of out of a lot of metals, this is definitely one of the one of the big uh, the big differences in uh, metal, thrash coming from America versus predominantly German but European thrash in general. Um, I the way I kind of think about it is, it really feels like American thrash, you know led to a lot it is a, is a lot responsible for the creation of death metal, and it feels like. Uh, um, uh, European thrash is really kind of like heavily responsible for the creation of the second wave of black metal to me. You know, you get that. The big difference a lot for me is in the vocals. Uh, you have these, you know, the American vocals a lot more guttural, a lot lower. The 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 European vocals, the German vocals a lot. There's the hitting those oh's, the 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 crazy highs, the just kind of going nuts. Uh, uh, I absolutely love that. Said so I love in I love that in metal. I love kind of like I said, you know, the the German definitely does seem to have some have some more warts on it, and the warts add a, a lot of uh, a lot of character. And you know, creator creator uh, 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 is just. I mean, we all. I'm. I'm clearly rocking the Sodom shirt. I'm clearly rocking the Sodom shirt uh, uh, because that is, as everybody knows, one of my all-time favorite bands. But if I'm being honest, if I'm being honest with myself, if I'm being honest with everybody, I do feel like Creator probably had a bigger impact. Maybe um, you know, uh, a bigger 
there the, the especially in the early days of Sodom when Sodom was a bit of a, a mess of a band, which is again one of the reasons I like them, but not pleasure. Hey, look, we can argue about we can argue about coma or pleasure, but I mean for me for me, I mean Coma of Souls is really kind of like a real pinnacle album, but we have a lot of we have a lot of pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. We're having a lot of chance for pleasure. Pleasure? Is it all pleasure? Do I have to change? Do I have to change? Yep, you do. I have to change? Okay, I'll change it. I'll change it. Look, yeah, is, if we're getting a creator album, I'm not, I'm not, I don't super care which one it is. I'm just excited to talk about... 86. Talk about German. 86. Yeah, I so. think pleasure was uh, in or slightly close to my top five. I really like Extreme Aggression, too, which is a little bit later, of course. I think kind of Crater kind of start to hit their stride a bit more in terms of songwriting and maturity. Maturity? But I think Pleasure, pleasure was kind of balls out. <laughs> Well, not the Hollywood department <laughs> of metal, you know. It's, I think German metal was always a little bit more yeah, rough, the nasty. German, there we go. Whoops. Nope. Let, hey, it's live. This is this is the pleasure of Twitch. John Groh, coma for the win. I agree with you, Blaine. Well, well, stop pointing at. Look, hey, I know everybody's noticing that it's that better is spelled B E T E R in there. Look, it was that 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 graphic was done by Daniel Williams, uh, our our or extra editor extraordinaire from Brazil. Uh, you know, English is his second language. Give the guy a break. How many languages do you and, speak? And also, we blame the guy who's not in the room. Yeah, and, and he's not even in the country. <laughs> <laughs> so, easy to toss the blame over to him. Um, uh, I stepped away. Blake, did you, um, are you into Creator at all? Or is that, was, is that, is or was Creator on your radar? And were you a fan? Yeah, I mean, I enjoy Creator. Um, Probably not as near and dear to me as, as some other bands, but uh, still great. I would, I would, I would say uh, the big band that we always wore out in the band was Sodom. You know, like uh, Agent Orange and Tap in the Vein, stuff like yeah. that. We were always going crazy for Sodom, uh, but Creator is great and Obsessed they seem like really good. Cruelty, uh, cruelty, cruelty. Sorry, just had to do that. <laughs> yeah. No, there. I mean, look, you, you can't deny those those albums. You know, it, but it is a different sound, like you said. I mean, the the German thing, the vocals are definitely usually, you know, a little more high pitched. Not Sodom per se, but you know, Destruction and Creator have have that kind of thing you were talking about um, compared to American bands from the time. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, they it, it's 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 you know undeniable. Those records are are legendary. Yeah, I mean, you probably talked about the German thing while I was yeah. out of the yeah. room, but yeah, I just, you know, I really like that German-European thrash sound. It's dirtier, it just seems a little, like, rougher and, like, you know, poorly produced in the right way. Yeah, right, you know? love it. Um, that um especially when i listen to some of the like sentence of death by destruction i listened to not that long ago and i was like man wow yeah like they were barely able to play this <laughs> yeah yeah oh yeah i mean sodom but is, god bless them that they sodom, played it sodom legendary for that the, the uh the 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 famous quote uh when they got signed uh uh oh you guys are you guys are awful you're gonna sell a lot of records <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah. Are we doing a, a vote between Crater Records or? I, I tossed a vote in the chat, Crater or Sodom, because there was, you know, there is some Sodom love here. I have a plan for Sodom personally, um, uh, so don't worry. There's, there's, we're gonna talk about Sodom uh, on this on okay. this stream. I mean, you know, uh, uh, I'm in a, I'm in a flag show. waver here. Yeah, yeah. There's, I, I, I've got a lot of, I got a lot of Sodom love in my heart. But like I said, it's not about love for me. It's just about the fact that Creator seemed like the bigger band, uh, the more influential band, and it, mm. in the chat, proven to be true with 75% of the vote going to Creator. Over um, who? Uh, over Sodom. Okay. And I why not both? That. Because we got to pick five. We've got to pick five essential early. So hey, I'd love to put both. If it was my list, I'd put both. But we got the chat. We've got Blake. We've got Sam. And 
you know, we've got to we've got to lock some horns. Uh, I think the tricky thing is that creator might get bumped. Did we talk about destruction? Did I miss destruction? We haven't talked about destruction yet. I mean, I might be the outlier here, but I like it out here. Uh, destruction, eternal devastation, to me is a better record really? than than pleasure to kill and. Sodom are near and dear as well. Persecution Mania. Yeah, Agent Orange. Obsessed by Cruelty. Fuck. Great stuff. But Destruction for me, like, ah, where do I put, how do I pin this down? They just have songs that were super visceral and I think they've aged well, the songs. And maybe the band has aged well in the sense of like performance. And Destruction's kind of a funny band because like most people you put probably the first three albums, Sentence to Death, Sentence of Death, Sentence of Death, Infertile Overkill, Internal Devastation, and you just go like that and no one will know what, which one is which. <laughs> Except for a few nerdy few in the crowd like myself. But I think Eternal Devastation is... Uh, is a super solid wreck. Curse the Gods. Uh, there's a lot of tracks on that album that still are in the band's set. Again, I think Crater, well, not I think, Crater is a bigger band. Mm -hmm. um, but hey, I just gotta, I gotta get some destruction in there. I can't let that go. That can just be my personal outlier pick. Personal outlier pick. But if I was forced Desert Island to choose one record between Creator and mm -hmm. Destruction, Eternal Devastation would be my album. Blake, thoughts on Destruction? Um, you know, I never got super into Destruction. I've seen him a couple of times. I do, I do like the records mentioned. Um, uh, what's the one? Mad Butcher. Yeah. Um, some of that stuff is Mad it's great. Mad Butcher. Yeah. Come on. Oh, Schmier is the there's best. So you know, there's yeah. so many great bands. It's like yeah, there, you know, there's some that you're not going to spend as much time with, and I think Destruction is one of them. But I mean, mm -hmm. obviously. Legendary band, uh, you know those albums are great. Yep. All right. Well, it yeah. seemed like destruction was a, was a stop. We had to had to, uh, had to mention take it, but not necessarily an essential. I got a, I got another one. I'm gonna die on a mountain for. Oh yeah. Do you wanna? Should we go there? Are you hiking up? Well, you got your. I you hike it up your, the mountain. You got your hike. While, while I'm staying global. Global. Yeah. Beneath the remains, Sepultura, 1989. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why I love this record so much, to be honest. It is... No think, idea? Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, I think it suffers for, for its production a bit, like as time has passed. I'm not sure it has the cool, it's, it, it's become cool again production, like a lot of... Or, or many of these albums, I mean, Rain, The Sound of Rain and Blood is never going to die, right? That's a timeless thing that just is so rare. But I don't know, for me, Beneath the Remains, it, it's another one of those albums that has these songs that are later in the album, Lobotomy, Hungry, um, uh, Primitive Self, there's these deeper tracks, which to me are just super solid tracks and never really quite, like everyone talks about inner self and mass hypnosis and obviously the title track, but man, I think Beneath the Remains is, I think Beneath the Remains is Sepultura's finest hour. Not a popular opinion, I know, uh, but that's, that's, that's my two bits. I wouldn't be able to leave this room today without getting beneath the remains at least into the conversation. We've got be and, and maybe because, and I'll shut up, it's their thrash album. Yes, yes, right. This is a band that this is a band that uh, it definitely influenced death metal starting out. This is a band that goes off and does Sepultura. Just yeah. their genre is Sepultura after a while. Uh, we do have some Arise fans in the chat. Yeah. Blake, what are you saying on Sepultura? Yeah, I was about to jump in. Um, Obviously, Beneath the Remains is incredible. You know, I, I, I love that. I love everything about it. Um, but I think pound for pound, song for song, we were talking about No Time Wasted thing. I don't think you can deny uh, 
arise. Because, I mean, to me, this is when they really started writing great songs. Like, Beneath the Remains has great thrash songs, but great songs that, like, a lot of people across the board can really appreciate. You know, they got really heavy on this record. You know, definitely heavier if we're, you know, it gets, it gets a little groovy because you're going into the 90s, you know, obviously. So we're, we're we left the 80s. Yeah. But, uh, you know, this record, to me, it's just, like, like I said, it's it's you know I think it I want to say it has less songs. I can't remember how many songs are on Beneath Their Mains, but it just feels like it um, incorporates a lot more elements. They start bringing in you know their the primitive the future, landscape. not primitive self. I bet. They, Sorry, they, they start uh, they start bringing in stuff from uh, you know their surroundings and uh, you know bringing in the kind of tribal element. Not quite as much as they did on the next record, but like mixing that with you know their brand of what Slayer did, uh, but it sounds Brazilian and it sounds like you said, like Sepultura. To me, it's the songs are just, just better. But that doesn't mean that Beneath the Remains is an incredible album. But yeah, I, just think, I, I think you, they, no, I, I don't yeah. disagree with any of that. I think it's interesting. Like, I feel like a rise is to Beneath the Remains as Master of Puppets is to Ride the Lightning in many right. ways. And for yeah, some yeah. reason, I'm on the Ride the Lightning side <laughs> this time. I feel like. Yeah. I hear you about the songs. I, I, I maintain that I think that if, if Beneath the Remains had the production of Arise, it would be on that level. And I kind of harp on the production thing. I think the songs are better on, on Beneath the Remains than people give it credit to, because I think a lot of the, the intricacies, I've always loved Andreas's melodic lead work. Like he yeah. brought in, and maybe that's what it is too. Like I feel there's, there's, to use your phrase, Blake, pound for pound, there's more like virtuosic playing. Like I feel like Beneath the Remains is Andreas' most virtuosic record. And maybe that's why I'm attracted to it. He does so many great like lead lines or high harmony lines um, yeah. that, you know, he, yeah, it just kind of nailed it for me. Uh, so. But yeah, and, and Arise is funny hearing you talk because it's like, again, the Master of Puppets analogy is 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 totally relevant one, yeah. here. Because I think that Arise just felt a bit too polished for me, right? It it, mm -hmm. it and and yeah, Desperate Cry was great. And they had they had videos, like they had the Desperate Cry video. Is it Desperate Cry? I think it was Desperate Cry. Uh, yeah. had a video, it was way bigger. I mean, they only had an inner inner self video it was like Pardon me? Did embryonic. They, did they have a video? Dead You're embryonic right. cells. I know they dead yeah. embryonic cells. My mistake. It was dead embryonic cells. But uh, an inner self, the video for inner self was like just a, a hair above a home video. But I remember watching it on Much Music and would be so fucking excited when they played inner self on Power Hour because it was like, this was like real underground metal getting played on yeah. like our nation's music channel. And that didn't happen very often. So anyway, but yeah, Arise is great. And there's no doubt that it is like, it is, it's like Sepultura's first like professional sounding and looking record, I think. That, that's an interesting uh, perspective you have on the, on the polished nature of Arise, because to me, uh, Beneath the Remains has a more, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, like, you know, the snare, it's like, it's more of a, it, to me, it almost sounds, I, polish isn't the right word. It just sounds a little more, um, I don't know what you'd call it. Like, I mean, I would kind of say polish, not in a bad mm. way, but like Arise to me is like, they're in the 90s where everybody's just going organic and the right. drums are super dry, you know, but like in a cool, dry, like rock and roll way. It, it, to me, it's almost like sometimes I feel like Beneath the Remains is like, the more polished recording, but like obviously Arise, they start really polishing the songs, you know, and the songwriting takes a step up. Yeah. You know, in terms of, you know, the riffing takes a step up. The, the no, I hear that. Up. Yeah. I think it's they like, started, you could tell they started to pay attention to dynamic, yeah. to the dynamics of yeah, the songs, yeah. right? Like here's, yeah, yeah. here's the tempo change. Like here's like a halftime part. Like, you're absolutely right. You can tell that they thought it through, which is Beneath the Remains yeah. is still in their like, just super like youthful, 
like yeah. fucking we're full of spit and fire and we just want to get this fucking these songs out you know what i mean so yeah um what's the board saying the chat the chat was uh the chat was with you they picked beneath the remains including a, a vote from our pal uh mike leon popping in of soulfly Why? and bubble point gifting a sub to mike leon uh hey if you guys like metal content, make sure you're following up Mike Leon because uh, he gets on here, he hangs out, he plays, uh, great streams, good pal, um, and yeah, I mean, all right. So there wasn't, there wasn't, it wasn't as close. It wasn't quite as close. Uh, it was still pretty close. Uh, the but yeah, beneath. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised to be honest. Took it away. But took it away over Arise. Yeah, I, I think Blake, you make a lot of really valid points about Arise. Is he changing kinda, your mind? No, no, no. But what it does, it actually makes me want to go back and listen to that record more because I've definitely listened to Beneath the Remains more, you know, in the last ten years than I have with Arise. But I should give it another. I gotta give it another go. Yeah, Lava Squiddy with a good point. Mike Leon is on the Cavalera Beneath the Remains and Arise tour. Notable mention. That is true. That yeah, is true, I mean, boy. When I saw that, I fucking <laughs> yeah lost my my stuff. A you bit. can't uh, you can't go wrong with either record. I mean, yeah, you know, like yeah. we're we're trying to split split hairs here. I mean, to me, I like the dynamics on Arise and what they were able to do and where they were able to take the sound. But if you're just going for pure thrash, you know, no breaks, it's yeah. uh. You can't deny who their mains. That yeah. record's absolutely phenomenal. All right. Uh, that was fun. That was fun. Yeah. That was a good one. I'm glad Sepultura is getting some love here. Yeah. Yes. Um, Blake, your next pick. Okay. Are we? Are we? Is this just any any of them across the board on these in these categories, or are we? Are we we're sticking. sticking we're sti category? We're still sticking to early. Well, we're doing early. We'll, early. We're lot once once early is kind of locked in. We're gonna switch to modern. Uh, uh, you and me talking modern, but early. Okay. What's another early album you got that we haven't talked about that you early. think? I'm assuming early is is, is obviously uh, pre 2000s you know, probably. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big one. Um, okay, essential early. Um, well, I don't want to miss anything super essential, but I might. I might do a slightly left field pick. Love that's a left all right. Pick around here. Okay. Uh, essential or this isn't super early. Let me see when this came out. I think it's eighty-eight. Is that early enough? That's that's. Can we do that? I, I said <laughs> early. I said it's pre two thousand. So you're like, is eighty eight yeah, 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 too yeah. late? <laughs> well, I'm looking at all the picks we have, and I guess Beneath the Remains is I think eighty nine. So we're good. Uh, this is for you can, Canadian boys, but um, yeah. Razor's Violent Restitution to me. Uh, you know, you were talking about how no one oh. uh, no one did Slayer's uh, formula, and uh, they definitely took Slayer's formula um, on Rain and Blood. And they uh, put their own spin on it. They tuned the guitar down pretty low for a thrash band in 1988. I mean, they were in, I think, C-sharp standard. So, like, they mm. took Slayer, put it in C-sharp standard, mixed it with all the early, you know, Dave Carlos style from the early 80s and everything. He has his own sound. He's like Gary. You know, you know what he's playing. Mm. But uh, to me, this record, it's a little longer. It's got It's got quite a few songs, but they're all really short. And it's just, like... It's like a, it looks like the cover. I mean, it sounds what it sounds like. It's it's like a chainsaw the whole time. I mean, it's so fast. It's so punishing. The vocalist Sheepdog sounds like an evil Lemmy. It's like it's perfect to me. So I would throw that one in there. I think it needs to go on the list pers personally. Okay. And you guys have to, you have well, to agree because you're. Well, no, I think this is, uh, I'm keeping my eye on the time because I got to make a French exit uh, soonish. But since we're on the topic of Canadian thrash, I think we yeah. should just sit on this moment for a bit because obviously there's some, some really important uh, Canadian thrash metal bands. And I wouldn't be able to leave the room today without at least giving a nod to my favorite Canadian thrash metal band of all time that to this day, it continues to baffle me why they never got as much love as they did. Because for me, their first two, three records are fantastic. And I think Blaine knows who this is. Yeah, absolutely. It's not, I'm sorry, DK, 
It's not Exciter. <laughs> it's not Annihilator. It is not Razor. It is Sacrifice. And the album I would put up there just because I just got to see their fucking album up there for a moment because I know it's not going to live very long is For Determination, uh, 1987. Again, for yeah. whatever reason, I've never really been able to put it together. They never seem to make the same level of impact as a Razor or a, a, an Exciter, especially. But for me, Sacrifice was like their level of playing, the playing, uh, uh, the technicality of the playing was on a comparable level with a creator uh, sort of in that very fast, very lean uh, uh, sounding thrash metal that I just think they never, they never get the love that they deserved. So I have to give a shout out to Rob and the boys that uh, I think Torment and Fire is super, super primitive. Yeah. Uh, super primitive. For Determination, it's like they're starting to figure it out. And I think a huge factor was their song uh, Reanimation was like, Again, I'm the old guy on heavy road. It was like CanCon requirements. We could go down <laughs> yeah. that rabbit hole. We have to. In we Canada, have to talk about. It, uh, uh, on we don't have time for we that. Legally, but have to talk about. It. We had there were certain <laughs> CanCon requirements, Canadian content requirements for Canadian radio and television, and because Sacrifice had a video off for determination, which was just a simple jam video, but it was so cool because they they used slow motion. They slowed things down and it was black and white. And I think they just shot it in a in a jam room. Maybe that's what imprinted me because they on me because they had they had the uh, the video too. Anyway, had to get sacrifice on the board. Blake yeah, I was I was gonna mention that I actually played uh, I played lead guitar on a, a cover of uh, reanimation. Uh, actually, probably like 10 or 11 years ago, some local band around here was covering that song and I played, they asked me to play lead on it. Yeah. So I love, I love that song. I mean, that yeah, riff, that main riff in reanimation, right? If it's like, you know, you go to the dictionary and it's like thrash 101, right? Like that's like, it's, 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 it's like on that level of like memorability as like, some of the great Slayer riffs or some of the great Metallica riffs. Anyway, I'm high on the fucking pulpit yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. I like this. I like this lower yeah. view covering too, Blake. This is, this is great addition. Uh, and you know, all yeah. the, yeah, I almost forgot about it. Honestly, it was like, it was probably back in like 2012 or 13, but I, I, I remember being stoked to do that. Cause I've always loved that song. Was it and, live uh, or, or can we, or is there, a, or is that, I'm recording somewhere on a band camp, I think probably. I have oh. to I remember the band's name. It was like a really short-lived band. Um, I have to like look it up and find it, but I just remember playing on. I just basically some guy hit me up and I I went and recorded it and then I sent it to them. And I don't know whatever really happened with it, but uh, it was fun just to you know learn part of that song. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Please dig that up for us because that would be that would be great yeah. to hear. I mean, there's a yeah. lot of sacrifice love, a lot of razor love. I mean, I have a I have a personal connection in that my friend and old boss at our cool record store, Rotate This, Brian Taylor, produced both of these albums. Uh, so so definitely, you know, working got got very uh, very you know always kind of really looked up to these records is just yeah. really the cool like when you're kind of like know the cool thing about you know uh, uh canadian metal history like both razor and sacrifice are really like are really like it's almost like yeah you gotta like show show your razor and sacrifice knowledge at the door to get into the cool club in uh in uh in the toronto metal conversation you know it's like wait oh, yeah. you don't you don't have a razor record sorry man sorry man the, <laughs> wrong, wrong bar wrong bar <laughs> yeah Anyway, I see how the board's given a lot of love. I mean, Voivod, I mean, Voivod, I think they're... That's a compliment. They're in a class of their own, and that's the biggest possible compliment. I think it would be an injustice to... Uh, an injustice to, for all. To put them in. Oh, oh, an infernal majesty. Yes, that is, that is old school, infernal majesty. Uh, dig that up for those of you that have never heard of infernal majesty. Um, but yeah, Annihilator, of course, 
getting yeah. some uh, some good shout outs here. And yeah, um, I don't know what the chat board is gonna say about sacrifice and whether it stands up, but I just had to get it in there. I think I think we're probably. I mean, there's been we we haven't we haven't talked. To, there's I mean the Bay Area really makes it difficult. There's a couple of uh, yeah. I mean Razor a little bit is more in the speed category. There's that. There's that. Are we are we are how that is, record that record though is there's nothing. It's that's pure thrash on that one. Eighty eight. You got you got because you can you can make the same argument that like other bands started as speed metal bands, but yeah. Final Restitution. Yeah. But it's like random even turned up a notch. It's crazy. Here, here's the issue. It's six o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I gotta jump. We haven't even talked about fucking Testament, about Anthrax, Testament. Anthrax, or Megadeth. Or Megadeth. And you know, I'm just gonna have to leave it to you, capable boys, to handle this. Uh, the only thing I do want to say, because I had to get off my chest too, is yeah. we had a long discussion prior to going live about Celtic Frost. <laughs> yeah. Because on some of the lists that I was reading, like they people were putting to make a theory on, and I'm like, okay, if Celtic Frost is a thrash metal band, which is, it's probably <laughs> <That's> a no. <laughs> but if they are, I fucking wouldn't leave the room without giving Morbid Tales a serious shout out because Morbid Tales for me oh, is, is the embodiment of something just utterly fucking beautiful. The sound and the packaging and the, the logo, the front cover, but it's so proto, so many other things yeah. that it's almost mm -hmm. a disservice to just put it in a, a thrash metal record. Yeah. 84, ah! It's, I mean, you know, yeah. there, there's, there's, we do have a proto slot. There is an argument for that. That's a, it's a record I love too. And I, I have a, one of my favorite patches is I, I got at Maryland Death Fest in 2011. It's a bootleg. It, it says Hellhammer, but has the album cover. For Morbid Tales on it. So it's the Morbid I mean, Tales image and it says Hellhammer above it. And I'm like, this patch like couldn't more speak to my heart. Oh, just man. I love I love the kind of goofy silliness of that. That like this is just wrong, but it's also kind of Super feels hard. right. So Super I got hard. that on a vest right there. I don't know what it is. Uh, I'm gonna have to leave the room. We haven't even talked about Death Angel. There's a lot. Uh Proto. Yeah, we, got a, we got a lot more to go, huh? Uh, yeah. Proto. Is it yeah. Is it screaming for vengeance? Question mark. Question mark. I don't know. Yeah. I'd put that in the mix for the Proto Thrash album. But uh um, right. yeah. to do this, people. I gotta run. Blake, thank you. That was fun. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for yeah. doing this with us. And it was fun cool. to uh jam out on uh Sepultura and Metallica particularly. Thanks very much. Totally. Thanks, yeah, buddy. good to see you, man. Take this yeah. out. Hell yeah. yeah. All, All right. right. All right. Are you good, Blake? Do you need to you need a you need a break? You need a minute? I'm gonna go I'm gonna go uh, take a bathroom break real quick and I cool. will uh, I'll be right back. All right, chat. We're gonna take a quick break. Uh, 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 we'll be back in 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 two two to three minutes. Uh, and you can you can get your get your arguments ready. We've still got a couple to talk about before we switch over to the modern category. So we're gonna we're gonna go on break for a second. Uh, maybe an ad will play. Maybe it won't. Who knows? It's chaos. I don't. Uh, if you're if you're subscribed, you probably won't see an ad. If you're not subscribed, you might see an ad. So if you hate ads, you could always get subscribed to the channel. And what's up, Exo, Exo Nina? Thanks for the first time in the chat. Um, See you soon, gang. Turn off the thrash intro on that. Oop, I'm back. Uh, no, on the pre-show. Oop, that, that was the lock. Thrash emerged from the underground.
And your boy is back. Still waiting on Blake, but that's okay. I'm here to chat with you. Uh, you guys seem excited. You seem raring to go. So, I mean, We're oh, we got, we, got, we got Blake back as well. So, we have to... We have to talk about a couple of big bands. I'm all excited to talk about the the. I'm all excited to shift over into modern territory, but we have some. Yeah, we have some. Yeah. We have a lot of big bands to to go before we can get there. Uh, I mean, yeah. we gotta we gotta. I think hit a couple. We're, we're, we we gotta mention a, a few other uh, classic, you know, uh, really important ones before we we move too far ahead. But we'll we'll, we'll get there. Right? Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. All right. So, next album that we're talking about, what are you thinking? Well, we got to, you know, we got to throw Megadeth in there. Yeah. Obviously, you know, and this is no disrespect to any of these bands. We just, we got to go one at a time, obviously. Yeah. But Megadeth, uh, Megadeth's right, right up there. And you can't, you know, what, what can you not say about Dave Mustaine? You know, he's, you know, one of, if not the greatest thrash guitar players, you know. Super inventive, uh, left of center instincts, and like you know, obviously technical ability. Every he's he's got everything, and he writes. He's a songwriter, so he can write everything. I mean, that's that's super impressive too to do to do it all. So uh, you got to throw Megadeth in there, and for me, it's uh, P Cells is my favorite. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, I mean, the chat, the chat. We've got some, we've got some, we've got some mustards in the chat for Mustaine. Uh, we've got, but we do have a question. The, the yeah. mustard emote, yep. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, well, the interesting <laughs> thing about Megadeth, especially compared to uh, a, a lot of a lot of bands, uh, is that um, you have a combination of like the the technicality is, you know, there's, I mean, <laughs> the one of Dave Mustaine's great jokes was uh, when they were accepting a Grammy and the house band accidentally played Metallica for the Megadeth walk up. And uh, and Dave Mustaine's tweet about it afterwards was, uh, "It's all right uh, uh, if they couldn't play a, a Megadeth song. Our songs are pretty hard, <laughs> you know. So you have this technicality, you have this amazing player, um, but you also have the ability to write catchiness, which is normally like something that doesn't necessarily go together. Normally, you kind of get a guy who's you know some virtuoso player who can go ham, but because he's in this other realm, he doesn't realize what people like to hear and and." You've got, and then you've got the kind of you know the the knuckle dragger that's able to put together the the catchy hook that we all love, and and he really really came together on both of them, and uh, and and really kind of you know made countless just super catchy amazing songs that really kind of also could totally totally blow everybody else out of the water in terms of playing ability. We do have yeah. the we do have the 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 chat asking about. Uh, you know, we're we're gonna have to get a a peace versus rust poll going. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I was gonna I was gonna say that. Uh, uh, I feel like Rust is is obviously the most legendary uh, pinnacle Megadeth album. I just personal preference. I go peace cells, but nothing against Rust. There, I think I think a, a poll would be a, would be a good idea. I'm curious what everybody thinks. Looks like Rust is is the favorite among everybody yeah, this on is, here. This is one, I, I mean, this is the kind of, cool, the, one of the things I really like about the stream is just like, the polls are so interesting. Yeah. Cause I mean, sometimes they like contradict the like arguments you're hearing in the chat. You're like, oh man, look at all this, all this for, uh, all this for, for this, for this album. And then you'll do a poll. And then there's a, a silent, a silent majority lurking in the background. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, True. countdown damages Gabriel. Countdown is also a great album, but kind of more flirty with heavy metal. Yeah, um, uh, Godzilla's. I like Dave's Vox. That kind of snarled, spitting, wailing shit is just right. The right kind of camp for me. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, and and the 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 obsession with puns. You gotta love. You gotta love. Oh yeah, hello me. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the yeah, the ability to write a cheesy lyric that is still somehow cool as well is like very a very weirdly unique uh, a mustaine thing. Uh, yeah, just right. just the 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 ability to combine a bunch of things that shouldn't go together, I think, is kind of what makes Megadeth such a cool band. There's just so much stuff where you're like, really? Uh, is th how does this work? And then it totally does, and it's and it's absolutely amazing. So. Um, I'll get a poll going in the chat. Let's see. 
Let's see. Yeah, what do you want? Is it Peace versus Countdown? Uh, peace versus Rust. Or, sorry, uh, <laughs> Peace versus Rust. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Peace versus Rust, yeah. Oh, it's confusing because, yeah, I, get, I just, uh, like, wait, I'm saying the same album twice. Wait, no, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we do have, we do have both, we do have both as an option in the, uh, help me, help me, help me, where is, there we go. There we go. Rust in peace cells, yeah. <laughs> peace rusts, but who's counting? Rust in peace cells, yeah. 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 All right. So we've got a poll in the chat going. And damn, all right, all right. Early, early lead for Rust. Early lead for Rust. Very, okay, no, insurmountable lead for Rust, I would say, at this point. <laughs> Rust in peace, 22 to, to peace, 24 to peace cells. Here, we'll toss, let's, let's toss peace cells some love for... Okay, now quick toss countdown in the poll. Pay next piss. I don't think you got any votes for countdown. I don't think anyone's on your side with countdown. Countdown seem yeah. to be getting some some harsh comments in the chat. Watered down <laughs> was a was a line. Pop. Watered down pop. Yeah. Well, this has actually been uh, the most voted in poll too. I think uh, with with yeah, rust and peace really 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 running away with it 42 to 18 currently all right someone in the chat hey uh 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 let's 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 have a anyone want to type a little quick essay on uh on on rust and peace get a little rust and peace from the chat why are you voting rust and peace Stainers coming out of the woodwork for this one. I know, Inky, right? 44, 44 for Rust and Peace. We're only half done. As a fan of that era, uh, as a fan of that era, the Black Album crushed me and then Rust and Peace being followed by Countdown destroyed me. Yeah, I mean, there was, I mean, it was certainly one of those times where, you know, you definitely had everybody realizing that there was, there was money to be made. I mean, I think, I think when people lash out too much at those two albums, it's a little silly. I mean, come on. Come on, there's, there's a reason. There's a reason they were popular. There's a reason everybody liked them. Um, but all right, well, I think we can call it a little early. That Rust in <clears throat> Peace, just an absolute, absolute massacre. Absolute massacre. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, should we? Uh, shall we keep going? I guess. I guess we can. I guess we can. We can trudge on a little bit. We can stop the fight. Forty-five to twenty-two. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, we, I'm thinking. Should we? Should we stick some in proto right now just to get that category going a little bit? It looks like we're we're empty right there. Yeah. I mean, that, the interesting thing about thrash is, I mean, kind of all the stuff we're excited to talk about is like there you know with for example last week we did we did black and roll and then it's kind of easy to kind of have like okay well if we're talking about black and roll we have to talk about uh, motorhead we have to talk about venom but do they fit in they're yeah. not really blah 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 with thrash it's like there's not it, there's less like oh we have to talk about them but they don't quite fit they were a little too early it's kind of like thrash almost just like sprang yeah. up yeah i mean there's like four or five off the top of my head for Proto that I think are pretty – well, everybody would agree with across the board. Okay. Saying some okay, let's go. Yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's go. What are, your, what are your Proto picks? Well, I would say one Proto pick for me would be uh, Discharge. Oh, okay. Uh, I think all, all the, uh, you know, the Hetfields and the Scottians and the Hannemans, you know, they all give it up for – that record uh see nothing you know hear nothing uh see nothing say nothing because that record's just front to back no time wasted not even a point where it stops at all you know what i mean it's just totally brutal and uh definitely i think inspired many many thrash bands if, if not all the original thrash bands were pretty much inspired by discharge so i think that one's got to go in there for sure among, among a few several others 
That is that is uh that is a very I would agree a very astute and great pick. Uh, also a great pick is Der Beer Kaiser and Paynex Piss. Uh, Der Beer Kaiser with the hundred bits, Paynex Piss with the two hundred bits. Thanks guys. And uh, Limp Rip City Uprise uh, with the sub. Thanks so much. Thanks for using the Prime on the channel. Yeah, I mean Discharge is a band that I mean it, it's it's crazy how many genres that band like kind of spawned like discharge <laughs> is 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 yeah just uh, a, a great pick for this because they're just such an iconic band that that aren't metal they're not quite in the metal space but every every metal every metal fan with has a spot a place in their heart for discharge whether they whether they go outside of metal that much or not discharge is one that'll come up in a lot of conversations um and yeah just i mean as a as a as a big fan of 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 crusty d beat obviously discharge is uh, uh very near and dear to my heart as well so yeah let me let me chat bear with me while i while i toss an toss an album cover you can yeah while we look in the kitchen and i toss an album cover up there to toss in the in the proto space because that is yeah that's i think that's pretty pretty uh pretty undeniable do we have what do we got in the chat agree um let's see uh dave and lars likely wouldn't have met without mention of budgie and diamond head in lars's ad in the newspaper i was, actually about, to, I was, about, to throw out, I was about to throw out diamond head hey there this we go the perfect segue I but i was gonna say diamond head uh I guess what you would say would it be the the white album, or I guess it was Lightning of the Nations by 1980. Yeah, so Lightning of the Nations, Diamond Head, that definitely deserves a spot in there. If you know, if not only just for the huge influence it had on Metallica, you know, yeah, that they wear proudly on the sleeve. So yeah, absolutely. I would I would definitely throw Diamond Head, and then yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know what? Know. Certainly, certainly uh, uh, influential in the uh, in the if not just for the sole fact of like creating one of one of metal like leading to one of thrash in general but also uh also metal's just greatest covers of all time so yeah that's a, yeah another great another absolutely great proto pick i'd also throw in bands say, like exciter yeah. and anvil too yeah you're starting we're you know we're talking a little bit about the uh about the you know we're getting into the little speed the speedy world we've talked a little bit about razor and uh, yeah exciter exciter coming up by sam of course exciter uh, 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 a near and dear bands to the to the banger family as uh, as as the banger family and the uh, exciter family uh, have have crossover in mr daniel dk who will be with us tomorrow he's finally back from his crazy day what like 60 days of touring south america and the uh, and the and the west coast he's coming back and so we're going to have a little welcome back party stream for dk he's going to bring in some stuff he got on tour tell some stories hang out uh me and dk All just right. budding down so uh so yeah if, uh, chat if you're around tomorrow i hope you'll come out for that welcome welcome him back with us um but yeah all right Keeping, are we keeping on with the proto category? You got a couple more you wanna you wanna yeah. mention? Let's count these out. Well, we gotta throw Venom in there. Yeah, obviously. You know, I would say, well, I mean, take, take your pick, but Welcome to Hell, I think, is probably a a fair uh, a fair bet for that one. Venom, Welcome to Hell, gotta be uh, gotta be up there. Yeah, again, just like responsible for so much metal. I mean, you know, it's it's the uh, it's it's the proto it's the proto black metal band it's the proto black and roll band it's the proto uh thrash band it's the proto i mean just such a just i mean the really the amount of fun i think venom brings is like such a such an essential thrash thing where where sometimes you know death metal there's certainly some fun bands but there's a, certainly a lot of serious bands uh you know black metal is no fun allowed uh, but thrash metal i mean even the serious bands a lot of the time it's in a fun way right even the kind of like aggressive right. political commentary you get is usually like it's 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 silly it's jokes it's uh it's it's you know uh, it's a band putting the president on on a shirt with the president blowing his brains out you know there's like a there's an overly there's an over the topness to it but there's also a silliness and i think venom is kind of like a great pick to kind of reflect the like kind of just fun like over the top silliness that that uh, exists in metal that like thrash is kind of probably the one the one carrying the torch for like fun fun metal the most out of all the 
out of all the big kind of main genres without getting down into the into the subgenres. Yep. Yep. That's right. Um, well, I, I everybody's already beaten us to it uh, yep. on the on the chat, but I mean, you got to throw Overkill Motorhead in there because that yep. was seventy nine. You know, that's that's that to me definitely seems like a moment uh, influenced probably a ton of ton of guys because that just that took it to another level you know yeah i mean the 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 metal icon uh maybe like one of the the could be like you know the motorhead's a band that you could potentially put as like the the metal band like of all time just because you know you 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 have kind of it's it's motorhead managed to do something that really uh uh no other band has really done or maybe maybe judas priest where managed to cross over that you know you can put a motorhead song on in a bar and the average person's gonna know it um but the metal fans unlike with like something like metallica or megadeth there wasn't that there wasn't that 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 souring of the fruit there wasn't that kind of like turn there wasn't that oh it's no longer cool to like motorhead motorhead you know until until lemmy's death really kind of maintained that that metal spirit no one no one no one dares besmirch uh motorhead or or lemmy and that's kind of really a rare thing because we love we love to get mad when people get big in metal (laughs) and that just somehow magically never happened with motorhead Pain X Piss, mm-hmm. Motorhead is easily in contention for best metal band of all time. Uh, Dave O'Ferret, Judas Priest had elements of thrash as early as their second album. They're a great influence on future thrash bands. Yeah, yeah, like I said, another another band that's just gonna, yeah. yeah, yeah, go yeah. ahead. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was trying to think of what Priest album to, to throw down, you know, because they all kind of have elements. Uh, I would say, I mean, maybe... British Steel or Screaming for Vengeance would probably be just for when they came out, I guess the year they came out, uh, kind of pushing things forward a little bit. I would say either of those, you could probably go in there, um, take your pick, you know, British Steel. I I know I've seen Carrie King and people like that. Heap a lot of praise on British Steel for being really influential uh, at the time for them. So that could definitely go in there. But any, any of those records really. What's British Steel, more saying? proto, yeah. Screaming for Vengeance would be yeah. the most appropriate from Thrash Maniac. We've got, yeah, we've got uh, uh, Screaming for, you'd say Screaming, Screaming. Yeah. All right, hey, hey, let's, uh, you know, the yeah. proto, the proto is where we can throw things that we just want to acknowledge. We don't have to, we don't have to worry about how many protos we have. It's kind of the, uh, yeah. it's kind of the, it's kind of just yeah. the, the tip of the hat category, the, 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 yeah. you know, the, the honorable mention in the, uh, in the, in the, in the stream to make sure that, you know, kind of everyone's getting, everyone's getting. Yeah. I was, I was going to mention, cause someone did say in the chat and I was thinking the same thing. Uh, I mean, if you, if you really want to go proto, I mean, black Sabbath sabotage definitely has maybe the first thrash riff, right? It's got symptom of the, you know, is that symptom of the universe? Yeah. Or, or, yeah. So that, that's, that's gotta be, one of the first thrash riffs is not the, the first, right? 1975. Yeah. yeah I mean, that, that riff is reproduced so many times um, that it just seems like you can't, you can't not put that there. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, again, just like it's, I mean, because I guess, I guess it's coming up just because of how, how, uh, how influential, like, thrash is to the then creation of all other metal it's like all the the proto thrash is just like literally the first big metal bands like all of them kind of have a have a place in there because you know it is it is the it's you know you kind of have like to to get to just go way too hard way too hard in a in a in a uh into an analogy uh you've got Thrash is kind of like, you know, the the dirt, the earth that the metal tree would grow out of. And so uh, anything proto is just like literally the roots of metal, yeah. the kind of like really like e- elemental basic building blocks of like any any form of metal is is going to be the is going to be the uh, kind of proto thrash stuff. OK, I was going to I was going to jump and throw uh, one or two more into the uh either the yeah the the rest category just while yep. we're here because i got some tapes and i gotta 
give shout outs because they're just amazing records. Um, okay, so I would throw, this is a, I'm, you know, I'm from Texas, this band's from Texas, but Idolatry by Devastation to me uh, definitely belongs in, 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 the, in the category because it's, uh, it's just beyond brutal. I always play it and people haven't heard it and they're just like, what the hell was that? You know, because <laughs> it's like, not super it's not for whatever reason it's not super well known in, in a lot of circles but it's uh you know it's like 1990 i think 91 so this is the same era as arise and when it started getting really brutal like demolition hammers and all those bands but i just think this record's phenomenal and it's uh scott burns recorded it you know who did sepultura and uh morbid angel all that stuff so i would definitely throw idolatry in there because uh i don't think it gets recognized enough and it's every song is fucking incredible so yeah this is uh, that one in there this is so one of my favorite parts about this stream is that uh uh you know i kind of like get the same experience of the chat where i get to like this is a record i haven't listened to so i get to i get to like, go in i get to throw a little little bookmark on in my music folder and uh and and get something new to maybe add to the rotation and so it's uh it's it's a gr- yeah. yeah lava squiddy time to check out devastation shreddy boy devastation yeah. has really chunky riffs um yeah we've got uh uh you base human you can't go with devastation before mentioning testament or destruction come on be real hey hey we're, the, the order the order <laughs> things get mentioned it is not yeah. indicative of anything. This is a free flowing chat, right. man. We're just we're just vibing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just connecting. We're talking about what we're feeling. Um, uh, this I'm is also I'm by personal preference too. Yeah, there's yeah, so many know? great albums. We even talked about Anthrax and like they they deserve a spot. They were doing some really sick stuff early on. This full of metals, really heavy for the time. I mean, you know, you can't deny a lot of those songs and those records. So even them, I mean, I don't want to disrespect them by having not brought them up so far, but you know, we're going one by one. We don't, we'll be here all day if we're going to. Yeah, I know. Right. We got, we got to talk about some modern stuff. I want to, I want to, I want to toss a little shine around some, some bands that, uh, that are, that are, that are carrying the torch today because it was an interesting thing that, that Sam, Sam mentioned where the thrash out of all the, out of all the genres seems to have like the, the kind of least representation of like, bands in the modern era uh you know if you look at from 2000s you know in death metal and in 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 black metal there's like a pretty massive massive wave of all kinds of bands all kinds of things happening and when you think of the big bands that you know uh uh that have kind of like really made a a a a splash that are kind of the you know the open air european festival headliners the the amount of thrash bands that kind of came up is is pretty small like yeah i mean it's hard to think of any you know thrash bands these days that are doing like you know the gojiras and the behemoths and just the kind of like massive massive bands that have gotten kind of bigger outside of kind of that first wave of 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 like 80s 80s early 90s metal so uh uh uh, you know we want to we want to talk a little bit about some modern modern thrash so everybody relax we'll try and get to as much as we can shreddy boy yep yeah i mean yes we i i I, none of us are just going to be saying it because because blake's on here but we we will absolutely have to talk about that band there will be no not talking about that band when we talk about modern thrash metal don't you worry no one no one no one on uh that's <laughs> well, that's what we do around here. We just keep having every t- every time. It's like it, the our expert is literally just someone who recently in their life made an <laughs> essential record for the genre we're talking about. So yeah, we have to we have to constantly make people blush around here. Um, you, but you guys are getting ahead. You guys are getting ahead. Relax, relax, relax. You're yeah. you're mad at us for not talking about some of these early bands, but then we mention we say the word modern, and suddenly the chat is filled with evil, municipal waste, warbring, or havoc. Talk Toxic Holocaust, of course. Um, so, uh, uh, I mean, but hey, if the chat's feeling it, if the chat's feeling it, you know, we we're we're getting close to the end of the stream. Uh, uh, I feel, I mean, I feel pretty good. I feel pretty good about our essential early and legendless. Look, there's some bands we didn't acknowledge, but I think we can all agree some of the bands we didn't acknowledge are really not are really not. You know they're great. They're great bands. They're good dimensions. But you know Exodus, uh, Metallica, Creator, Sepultura, Megadeth. You're you know you're 
you're kind of having a hard time. These are household names. Yeah, yeah. these are these are if when we're saying essential. There's a lot of great bands that um, Testament. Te I have a plan for Testament. I have a plan for Testament. So don't worry, Chad. Hey, we, don't worry. We, we, we we left out a, a bunch of bands. I mean, there's obviously all the crossover stuff. I mean, you would say Nuclear Assault. Some people would call them a crossover band. I would yeah. say they're they're more thrash, but you know they're one of my favorite bands ever. Didn't get to mention them. You know, there's Violence. There's so many great bands. We just you know we could make yeah. these longer. We would we'd cover them all for sure. Yeah, yeah. This was you know uh, uh, clearly at some point we'll probably just have to have to do a second run where we do Essential early and we do Essential Modern because yeah, there's there's so much stuff to cover. But I mean, even when we do Essential early, we get ten and then people are like, I can't believe you didn't cover this, and it just it it's it's never ending. It's never ending. Um, so yeah, we're getting close to the end of the stream. So I'm gonna I'm gonna segue into Modern and and let me let me segue into modern in a way that'll hopefully make some of the people in the chat happy uh uh let's talk about an essential modern record just because it's a modern record doesn't mean it has to be a modern record by a modern band because some oh, bands modern bands only okay I, i'm gonna i'm i'm focusing on that but i have a bit of a i have i have i, I figured we'd have to make some compromises and so i planned some compromises in my head because some bands have managed to, you know, they can put out great records, but they're not going to really hold a candle to the records that they put out. But I think uh, Testament, uh, 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 Dark Roots of Earth, uh, is a record that we can talk about where, you know, Testament kind of, you know, was had their, had their heyday, wasn't really kind of, things weren't necessarily vibing as well for Testament anymore. And then... And then this record is kind of a surprise. It comes in 2012. It comes after, you know, not a period of great activity, not a lot going on, uh, uh, not a lot of great records coming out for the past couple of years. And then it, it you know, really kind of surprised. Uh, uh, Dark Roots of the Earth really came out and, uh, and, and kind of, yeah, revitalized, reinvigorated, kind of uh, breathed some new life into, into Testament. And... They seem great for it, you know. Alex Skolnick, a friend of Banger, been on, um, uh, uh, and you know, there, there's, there's, so there's my, there's my peace offering to the people mad that we didn't cover Testament in the early. Is that we've got a great Testament record in the modern period that kind of is like relevant in the modern period because it's like modern Testament. It's a, it's, it's kind of a, a, a shift in the band and a kind of, you know, feels like a different era of Testament. So that's what I'd say. Are you happy? Are you happy? Chat, there you go. You got your testament. We're getting a lot of Okay, so I'm going to get this out of the way now. We're getting a we're getting a bunch of vectors. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to try and be diplomatic here. I'll say vectors too progressive. We're talking about essential thrash. Vector kind of created a different genre, went off in a different genre as a way to not talk about Vector because Vector is also a now a pretty complicated band to talk about for a variety of reasons. So I'm going to sidestep talking about Vector I think in this chat um uh because, yeah, they, it, I'm just going to say, hey, it's a... My pack died, but yeah, Vector's too progressive. Big Vector got to me, yeah. Canceled. Blaine's lawyers censored Blaine talking about Vector. Yeah, that's enough about Vector. So, Blake, modern band, modern record uh, in the modern thrash area that you think absolutely needs to get in there and uh, and and get talked about. What's your pick? What do you toss it in there? Wow. Um, it's tough. Uh I would one that I think that everybody should hear, and, and I don't think a lot of people have heard is uh, it's called "The Sleeping Eye" by the band Iron Age. 
Oh, yeah. Um, it came out in 2009. Uh, you know, those are like our older brothers. And we actually played the record release show for that album. And um, that's a record that, you know, really they were they were in the hardcore scene but they were i mean that's a metal record and i don't think a lot of people have heard it because they you know this was this was a while ago and you know kind of before all the social media that's now really popular but um everybody that knows that record worships that record and it definitely had an influence on us you know oh, yeah. which you can yeah. um and you know chris our drummer he he ended up playing in iron age for a number of years uh on guitar so you know, we have a lot of connections with them. I played another band with the singer Jason, so uh, that record I think everybody should uh, should hear and appreciate because that's got to be that's got to be one of the best of uh, this millennium for sure. Yeah, I mean that's I of course I, I mean I feel like uh, I feel like you you know it's it's uh, uh, hey dear Brew Kaiser, thanks for the hundred bits. Uh, uh, don't worry, don't worry, we'll get there. Um, yeah, I mean this is kind of interesting because it's it's funny how the you, you know y this is a band that influenced you guys uh, and then you end up with this connection with and I think a lot of the reason that you did have the metal world exposed to Iron Age was in turn by you know your connection with the band your your touring with Iron Age really kind of uh, uh, showed a lot of metal fans a band that they might not have uh, not have heard otherwise um, and. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that was kind of you know you you y'all did some really great tours where you where you found those bands that you're like, you know, or just formed those connections with those bands where you're like metal fans will love these bands, metal fans probably don't know these bands, and you know, kind of just really kind of opened up, opened up uh, uh, the kind of uh, the metal world to some stuff that is is amazing, and you know, in the same way that like a a band like Discharge um, is is super influential to metal and uh you know if it wasn't for kind of metal fans talking about uh, and metal musicians talking about discharge some metal fans might miss it same kind of thing with, with, with a lot of what you guys did and speaking of speaking of things people are doing bone up or nice gifting the sub to j dean bean thanks so much for true diplomacy can we get a vector pull judas priest in the discussion but not vector seems wrong no we're not talking about vector <laughs> i on the tv with 100 bits thanks so much No, 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 no democracy here on this subject. We're not talking about Vector. Uh, um, uh, uh, uh. But we do have, we do have uh, uh, a lab. Speaking, speaking of, speaking of punk, speaking of crossover, speaking of, uh, speaking of, you know, bands that are kind of bridging the, still firmly a thrash band, but kind of bridging the world, bringing together punk and metal fans. Definitely some in the chat, uh, Lava Squiddy, Municipal Waste. Yeah, we've had some, We've had some uh, we've had some uh, some demands for municipal waste and uh, no, undoubtedly I forget municipal waste. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, the, they uh, you, can't, you can't deny the the effect they've had on on you know bringing thrash back or repopularizing it to a younger audience. Uh, I mean, they started in I think I want to say they started in like '99 or like two, like really early, yeah. earlier than you think. I, I, I can't remember exactly when they started, but I mean, those guys are great. They've been consistent and worked really hard over the years and they've done a lot for, I, I would say for the genre. And, you know, you can't think of modern uh, thrash without thinking of musical waste. So yeah, gotta, gotta give them their due. You know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, you know, the, the kind of like a, a bit of a counterpoint to, I think when I say, uh, when I say, when I was talking earlier saying, you know, you don't think of those, those, those big thrash bands, those kind of like, when you think about the modern era, those bands that just leap to mind, but definitely one of the ones yeah. that is true for that is municipal waste. And, you know, the cool thing about municipal waste, I think is they, they did do, they found a way to do something kind of different that wasn't, that hadn't really been done in the genre before by just kind of being that like, punk party thrash like simultaneously like just like a beer soaked party but then also like super political really bringing the kind of like punk like i'm gonna yell at you about some stuff and it's gonna be very clear what i'm yelling at you about and uh and we need to talk about this yeah i mean they're, they're a great band and they they do what you know they are who they are and they uh are not like they're, they're very forthcoming about that. And I, I like how they haven't really changed the formula. You know, they're like, they've, you know, they've, they've expanded in, in ways here and there, but I mean, they've put out a lot of albums and they've, and they're still them. And there's no one else that's yeah. that, 
is, you know, sounds like them at this point and, and does what they do and they do it really well. So you gotta, gotta have them in there. Yeah. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And I mean, there's a, there's a, a, a lot of, a lot of people going in the chat for uh, a, 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 a kind of a, a, a weird one where a band that just kind of, I feel like, like almost sprung up out of nowhere for people. Um, uh, uh, but we can talk about, we can talk about a, uh, what Warbringer album we talk about, I guess, is maybe up to, up to, uh, up to the chat. I mean, I have, I have one preloaded. I was expecting to talk about Warbringer. Um, but, uh, I mean, I, Weapons of Tomorrow, most recent, uh, 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 uh Warbringer record. I'm, I'm willing to take it super current 2020, um, uh, uh, and talk about just a really kind of, you know, a band, yeah, came up in the 2000s and then, uh, uh, you know, made a big splash, and I think released one of the best records of their career. Yeah, two years ago in in Weapons of Tomorrow. Um, so, yeah, do you have any thoughts on Warbringer? Yeah, I mean, uh, Carlos, the drummer, songwriter, is uh, he he played drums for us a couple of summers ago. I guess at this point, a few summers ago. Great drummer, great guy. He can play every instrument. He's very talented. Um, yeah, Warbringer. I mean, obviously they're they're they got to be in there too. I mean, they're, they, one of the big names of, you know, the last 20 years, obviously, uh, put out a good amount of albums and yeah, they're awesome. So they, they definitely deserve to be on the list. All right. But the, the chat, the chat for it, the chat for it is demanding a poll. I'll toss up a poll here. Cause we do have, we do have, we do have a choice. We do have a choice. There's, there's, it seems to be the, but awesome in uh, that it's woe to vanquished and weapons of tomorrow. The two most recent, um, the two most recent records are, seem to be the, uh, the, the popular ones in the chat. And that's kind of like a, a it's cool to see again, like I was saying, just a thrash band that everybody's kind of yelling about in the chat and, you know, with a bit of, with a bit of argument about two super new albums. Um, uh, Pedro Rivera, Carlos was a sweetheart when I got to talk to him in 2019. Uh, uh, and yeah, um, so the chat, we've got our Warbringer poll up. What are we saying? Woe to the Vanquished is crushing weapons of tomorrow. All right, I got to do some downloading. Give me a second. <laughs> uh, uh, that that seems that seems decided pretty much immediately. I'm shocked. I'm surprised. I uh, but then I mean I do. I do kind of love to I do love to get excited about a new record. That's kind of my whole my whole job here is to get excited about brand new records. All right, let's get that. Let's get that added. And uh, do you have uh, where are we going from here? I've been I've been driving the car a little bit. The chat's been driving a car. Where are you taking us, uh, Blake? Are we for modern? For modern, yeah. Oh, man, honestly, I'm I'm. I'm I don't know. I'm, I have to think about it a little bit. Um, you have to think about it. Lots of records that I, that really like had an effect on me. I'm not. I'm not really sure. You know, I'm always listening to the old shit. So. All right. Well. Yeah. Well, we can. You know. We can. We can give you a minute to think. I mean, with a band we have to talk about. Uh, okay. Uh, there's a band we have to talk about that'll give you a minute to think because you don't need to weigh okay. in too much on them. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead. Uh, so obviously the chat, I think probably the easiest inclusion of all time in this list uh, 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 for modern thrash bands. Uh, uh, very easy to just quickly toss uh, a, a Power Trip album up in there um, because uh, I think, I mean, it's really, it, you guys, I mean, the it really, I don't think it would be overstated. I mean, so much extends beyond just the quality of the record. Uh, just something magic about the band that was able to, you know, get get punks listening to metal, get metalheads listening to punk, get people excited. Uh, you know, just I mean, probably I don't know. I don't know why people ever let you open for them <laughs> uh, because it's just like making their jobs so much harder at a concert is having to having to follow Power Trip uh, at any show is something that I would be like. No, no thanks. That seems that seems uh, that seems crazy to me. Uh, just you know, you w w what what y'all were able to do with shows, uh, uh, just 
I mean, you know, the combination of having a great record, but then also being able to translate that into an even better live experience, uh, you know, uh, as I, as I, as I get, as I get slightly older, you know, shows, shows, you, you, you get, shows get a little creakier. Um, but you know, I, I mean, the Strombo house, I literally saw, saw Power Trip in a, in a sling with, having recovered from shoulder surgery and <laughs> and was just like I wish my shoulder wasn't in s s just in a sling and 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 have a metal plate in it so I could go crazy in this in this house at this show you know just uh just a just a totally uh just a totally wild time and uh and I mean no I could there's not enough there's not enough to good to be said about uh about about y'all Thank you. Ah, it means a lot. I'm glad yeah. that people, glad that people enjoy, you know, the records and got to see uh, us play a lot. And you know, I'm proud. I'm proud that it made an impact, and we were able to get up on some big stages and you know, put on for our friends and for all the fans and everybody. It's 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 yeah, like you said. There's not a lot of thrash bands that have been able to get on those big stages that are new, and uh, you know, we seems like we we made a decent impact made it made a little dent and uh means a lot to have the respect of people like you and everybody here and it's like it's awesome so modern yeah modern pedro pedro k669 says nightmare logic is the best thrash album of his generation uh our, your generation our generation um uh, uh drunk master alex nightmare logic is absolutely fucking brilliant uh jason french saw you guys play at bloodstock festival we got some bits coming in people throwing some bits around getting excited for uh getting excited for power trip dear beer kaiser ain't satan's finest good to see you thanks for the bits uh appreciate it uh, and you know, yeah, just, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's funny that, you know, just how much like, I don't know, just, just makes you, just gives you warm, just gives you warm fuzzies, just gives you warm fuzzies for, uh, for, for, for metal. And it's nice. It's nice. It's nice. Cool. Um, and the poll we've got going on is Havoc Essential. Currently, currently no, slightly leading. Uh, uh, currently knows, slightly leading. Uh, Havoc. I mean, again, you've got, you've got, you know, Havoc. I think, Havoc. I think is a little represented in in municipal waste. I feel like Havoc's kind of like uh, uh, impact is kind of similar to municipal waste. They're doing similar kind of things, bringing like a lot of kind of like punk energy to thrash. Um, for me, Havoc's a little less essential just because they, I mean, their records, they put out a lot of good records, I would say. I'd say they put out a lot of good records, but that, I mean, I have a Havoc record in here, but no Havoc record ever really kind of like fully stuck it, stuck its hooks into me to, uh, to kind of, you know, the way that like something like a, you know, the bands we're talking about, Municipal Waste, uh, 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 Power Trips, you're, you're, you know, in that in that kind of thing. Thoughts on Havoc? Yeah, I mean they're they're a you know very active band. I I've never really listened to a lot of their stuff, um, but you know I've, I've we've met the guys. They're obviously great players. They you know have a lot of fans. A lot of people are into that band. So you know I have no problem sticking them in there if you if if the Everybody else feels like they uh, they belong in there. I, I I just I'm not very familiar with their music, but I know I, I know them and you know have a lot of respect for them. So uh, you know I, I would not be a uh, naysayer to put them in there. So totally up to you guys. Yeah, I uh, I I feel like I feel like the chat agrees it was it wasn't really close uh it wasn't really close uh uh you know not 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 taking anything away from a very solid band just you know we again it's that thing right where it's you know it's like you all you have only five you have only five uh uh slots and there's a there's a lot to argue about there's a lot to go over so i've talked a bit we i i, I gave you a minute to think um and now it's you know your chance uh to uh to kind of Bring bring a record that you're excited about. Are we still in modern, or are we gonna put one more on? Uh, where where where? 
pretty much at our max, right? Yeah, we're getting close. So we we can start. We can make some exclusions. We can um we can we can we can uh we can kind of we can kind of figure out if there's something that needs to get pruned a little bit there. Um, but what do you? Yeah, this is you, tough. you got you got another modern band that you want to kind of. I don't really have anything else modern. Everything, I mean, the stuff I have, you know, we've talked about some of it that I would put in, in the rest category. Um, but I, I don't know if I could kick any of those records out. Yeah, I know, um, right? If I made my own the rest category, I'd probably kick a couple of them out. But uh, I don't want to I don't want to mess with the what we created over here. <laughs> so I'm pretty happy with, with what we've done so far. I know, me too. Yeah. Uh, What's Chat saying we got. Uh, um, uh, what is the second modern album? Uh, uh, it's uh, uh, Iron Age. I love everybody so doesn't know what Iron Age is. Um, <laughs> go listen, go listen to the Sleeping Eye by Iron Age, and and then you will understand why it's in there. It's yeah, way better than so much of what's happened in the last twenty years, in my opinion. It, if you like us, it captures this, a similar spirit, comes from the same, you know, background. You will love that record. So this looks, just, just, just go listen to it. And if you don't like it, then I can't help you. Yeah, there's look, there's there's. Uh, I'm sorry, chat. You we you can all come together about some things and overturn, but. You know, we've got if we've got a we've got a we've got a true expert, and uh, if he's saying it's in there, you you, you know you yeah he he's locking that in. Um, he's locking that it's in. It's a personal preference, but I, I if 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 you take any of my opinion with any grain of salt, just go listen to that record. I think I think you'll you'll enjoy it. If you uh, don't, then I don't know, then I don't know what I'm talking about, which is also possible. So impossible i will i will i will say it is impossible i don't believe it i won't believe it i refuse to believe it yeah fair uh, enough so then, <laughs> it's, um, it's a great album that everybody yeah. has to listen to uh a weird one that hasn't come up that this much in the chat that i kind of expected to hear a little more about that's definitely a modern band that i can think of if i'm if i'm uh if i'm listing if i'm listing kind of thrash bands that certainly certainly made a pretty huge impact and and have kind of changed uh uh the the metal landscape is uh is 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 nervosa i mean we got to have some the modern era seems to feel like it need, it would need some brazilian uh representation as well um uh and i mean i feel like nervosa's impact on 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 metal is pretty pretty undeniable in terms of you know modern modern brazilian thrash probably the 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 one of the if not the most kind of like identifiable modern uh uh brazilian thrash metal band uh you know kind of kind of made that made it to that mainstream popularity without people turning up their nose at them and uh and you know and also you know just a shout out to just a shout out to um to uh you know uh Prika and and I mean no longer in the band but uh you know uh uh, uh Fernanda uh for just you know giving a lot of putting a lot of uh, uh uh jobs out there for 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 female metal musicians and uh and you know a pretty a pretty a pretty big band I would say a pretty important band uh, uh Victim of Yourself a really great thrash record super aggressive super hard really kind of bringing that like Brazilian great combo of like the kind of the 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 heaviness of 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 American thrash with kind of the 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 wildness of uh, of European thrash. I mean Brazil does that really well. I've got another Brazilian band on here that's a little that's uh that feels a little less less influential. So Nervosa, I think we really need to uh we really need to include a, a Nervosa a, a Nervosa album for sure. In my opinion, chat how how are we feeling? Isn't Nervosa actually touring with Destruction this year? Are they? That would be a that would be a great show. Uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know. Are they? I don't know. I sometimes I don't know about tours because I live in Canada and uh, you know the the border can be tricky for people, especially because you know it's 
Canada, it's so spaced out. <laughs> it's so many tours. You miss Canada because it's like, oh, I got to cross the border to go to two cities. <laughs> Not worth it. Not worth the visa. Um, uh, uh, so, you, so you do get to miss out on some, on some great ones. Um, yes, Nervosa, Downfall of Mankind would be my pick. Crypta, the new Fernanda band is really cool too. Yep, totally cool, but definitely a death metal band. Um, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, so yeah, chat. Inky, did you miss Sepultura? You way missed Sepultura. That's, that's, uh, I, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about a second Brazilian band now. Uh, yes for, uh, so yeah, um, uh, I feel like, I feel like Nervosa. Uh, Jenner is a better thrash band with all females. I mean, I'm not including them because it's an all female band, and you know, uh, it's just it's it, a large part of it is just impact in metal. And uh, uh, my intro to Universal was Agony, so it's got my vote, but it could be any album, really. Yeah, and again, you know, a band that really, uh, really, really kind of put out a, a, a pretty consistent chunk of uh, chunk of uh, uh, of solid records. Um, so, I mean, we've got. Cool. You know, I, I wanted to mention Testament and the Essential Modern, but, you know, I'd kind of like to keep the Essential Modern as, like, actual modern bands. Um, I do I do have a gag, though. I do have a gag prepared, chat. I do have a gag. <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm going to apologize, Blake, that I'm going to do... I have a gag. I prepared a gag. Um, one, I, a band that I feel like mentioning in, in the modern era um, uh, is, is, is Sodom, because... Well, most clearly not a modern band in any way, shape, or form. I think out of any band we're talking about here, um, uh, uh, if you're talking about amazing records before, two th before the 2000s and amazing records in the 2000s, Sodom has maybe the best modern showing out of any thrash band that we've talked about, you know, most of them do yeah. not have the consistency in the 2000s. Uh, they didn't really put out a single bad album in the 2000s. They made that weird mistake of re-recording the, the the EP and putting some extra songs on it. I don't even really count that as an album. So I'm gonna do a gag. I'm gonna do a gag. Sodom. Yeah, I would say I'd say Sodom and Exodus were my two favorite uh, change. bands that are old, putting out modern oh, stuff. To my... <sighs> yeah, what do you got here? Close things out in my in my custom ordered from a weird Polish website. Sodom, Genesis, XIX, Rash Guard for Jiu Jitsu. Is that a Viking? <laughs> is, is that a Viking? Uh, like a Viking jersey? One of those little. It, uh, you could use it for biking. I use it for for wrestling yeah. and and Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> it's uh yeah. you know it's it's a compression top. You can use it for whatever you want. But uh, it's it's I I custom ordered it from a weird Polish website where you can just upload any artwork you any picture you want yeah. on, and they'll print it on these. And I made it, and I wear it, and I look ridiculous. <laughs> mm -hmm. In a in a yeah. sport top. Yeah. So yeah. this is my this is my this is my Sodom Genesis XIX is I mean just came out again I love a modern record and uh, and hard to argue I think with the most consistent maybe the most consistent of all of all all time most consistent thrash band if I if I'm yeah. like if I'm only getting to listen to one collection and I want to have diversity I mean Sodom whoop, big big breakfast stuff big 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 breadth of awesome records that you can listen to so that's my that's my sodom my sodom uh my sodom bit because you know they they got picked uh creator got picked over them in the early so my way of, of weaseling more sodom in here is is that we nice. are, we're getting close to the end of the stream though um blake you got a final a final record that you kind of want to want to make a case for that maybe we can steal a spot on here you want to kind of try and uh swoop i would you know I would definitely, this is probably one of my favorite records ever. So Handle With Care, Nuclear Assault. I mean, you could say it's crossover. I think it's pretty fair to say it's a thrash record. I mean, it's it's definitely got a punk, you know, and hardcore influence in there, but most people would consider that a thrash record. I think it's another one that's pretty much all killer, no filler. I mean, there's a couple, there's like one song that's a little, they like jam out for a second and whatever, because they had a good sense of humor, but every song is phenomenal and it just it's super catchy the riffs are fucking great the drumming it's awesome so i think uh we should definitely stick that in the rest i don't know where you can fit it but uh 
it definitely belongs in there. It's in my top five, personal top five for sure. Personal top five. All right. Yeah. I would, I would throw that in wherever you can put it. Pro yeah. Yeah. That's tough. We'd have to, what would we kick out of essential early? <laughs> uh, I wouldn't kick anything out. I just leave it just like that. If just you're asking like me, I mean, I was, we're, we're, we're extending certain categories, so we might as well just extend that one. <laughs> that album, I think that, I think that album deserves an extension personally. So yeah, that's my opinion. Okay. All right. Love the nuclear yeah. guitar, nuclear assault guitar sound top tier says Ben Abu. Uh, 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 zero life night vision says shit how hasn't anyone mentioned handle with care yet uh uh you know you've got you can't have six says aaron squiz uh lord of direction sam's not here cheating is allowed inky <laughs> inky daedalus breaking the law breaking the law uh um uh six there are no rules anymore anarchy it's chaos well i mean it's you know it's if there's a if there's a genre of metal that's going to be down for anarchy it is uh, it is definitely, um, <laughs> it is definitely thrash, right? It is thrash. It is thrash. It's the punkiest of all metal genres. So, uh, so breaking the rules. Um, we did have, yeah, a couple of honorable mentions for sure. Someone mentioned enforced, uh, enforced. I, uh, I certainly, I certainly like, uh, the, the past two enforced records. They're playing, uh, they're opening up for, uh, for uh, at the gates on the slaughter of the souls north american tour for the leg uh, that comes to toronto so i'm really excited to see them uh enforced uh for me it's just a, they're one of those bands where it's like i feel like uh i feel like they don't have a place on the list yet just because i feel like they haven't released their best record yet and it's not because their records aren't great it's just that i feel like that's a band that's that's got a nice it's got a nice bit of tarmac ahead of them they got a they got a they still got a they still got a ways till they reach kind of what the the peak they're going to they're going to they're going to hit ben freaking brand there that's going to be great your uh enforces great live yeah i haven't uh had a had a chance to uh to see them live yet so that's exciting um uh you know you, we have had some mentions of of evile uh, we haven't talked about evile obviously they are they are a band that kind of really did sort of uh come in at the two, start of the 2000s and really kind of feel a bit like they kicked off the thrash uh the thrash revival but you do have the weird thing with evile that the uk is just not really a thrash country I don't know if they just had too much punk and they didn't feel a need for thrash, but yeah, uh, you don't have a lot of thrash coming out of uh, uh, the UK, uh, and like there's not necessarily a, a, a defined UK sound. You've got uh, you've got like one kind of legendary UK thrash band, and then for me, Evile is a band that sound that I don't have a distinct sound is probably why Evile is not a band that I would toss up here. They, you know, they started as jamming out some Metallica songs and you can kind of really hear the, uh, the uh, Metallica influence to them. And yeah, I don't feel like, uh, I don't feel like I, I have like a uh, Evile record that I'm like, you have to listen to this if you're going to listen to thrash. Um, oh, there's a lot of UK thrash a lot. I know there's, I know there's UK thrash, but what I'm saying is like, you know, the 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 large bands the kind of bands that really that really stand out in people's minds the um the uh the bands kind of a lot of people talk about uh you know doesn't doesn't kind of have as much going on um you know you obviously there's obviously one record that could have been that could have been up in the essential earlies um but it was a record that didn't come up. No one brought it up, so uh, you know that seems like a that seems like a, a pretty fair reason for exclusion to me. Um, and yeah, you just don't have you don't have a lot of UK representation. Um, and I mean, I we're guess throwing the, we're throwing enforced in the rest, huh? We're throwing enforced in the rest. Oh, are we not throwing enforced in the rest? I mean, the rest yeah, is the rest yeah, isn't that, like an elite category or anything. The rest yeah. is kind of just a place to acknowledge some albums we talked about. I know it's kind of weird to ha say that when there's Ride the Lightning in there and, and yeah. consoles. <laughs> uh, but the rest is kind of like, ah, it didn't fit in the list. You know, the the stuff that's the above the line is kind of the, it's not, and below Proto. Proto and the rest are kind of just stuff I'm we looking, talked about. I'm kind of the stuff left down there that's not on this category thing. And I'm looking at Agent Orange and, Justice and kill them all and show no mercy and south yeah. of heaven. I'm going. Oh, if we're gonna stick more shit in the rest. We gotta. Yeah, yeah. 
So, There's but ig ignore the rest. Ignore the rest. I ignore yeah. the proto when you're thinking about this. The those are kind of just yeah. Those are those are the gutters. Those are the rain gutters where you know. I haven't really listened to that album because I don't. I've, I've seen people talk about it a lot. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you've got the the legend essential early and essential modern are kind of where our our defining list where we normally have a number a limit that we've that we've slightly broken um uh uh the uh that's the kind of that's the formal list that we're informally making <laughs> and I'm, I'm the, happy with this, with this list for sure you're happy with this list yeah i uh I'm, I'm pretty happy with it too i feel like we made a very good list i feel like we covered a lot of stuff uh uh, uh 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 and you know Hey Scruggs Corp, uh, uh, you're gonna die on the sale, get Iron Age out. I'm sorry, I'm sorry if I'm if I'm stacking up uh, people who's who's <laughs> who get a vote on uh, essential thrash. If I'm if my, I'm picking if I'm picking yeah, Blake was, or Scruggs Corp. That was my host, that was my host uh, privilege pick. Yeah. Was yeah. Iron Age record. So I'm sorry, guys, but yeah, uh, you probably haven't listened to it if you're talking shit on it. So yeah, yeah. Look, hey, and, and I'll and I'll make this super fair for chat. Uh, the instant, uh, the instant you're part of a uh, an album as good as Nightmare Logic, uh, you can kick it off. The uh, the uh, <laughs> you can you you can put out put out a record that good, and then you can absolutely kick it off the list. Uh, yeah, your your sure. vote your vote will count as much. Yeah. <laughs> Drug score fair. LOL. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Kebab, I agree. No one knows Iron Age. Well, then, then this stream, this whole goal, your homework, your homework for the next time I talk to you is go listen to Iron Age, and then come back and talk to us. Yeah, that sounds like a good a good plan. Yeah, that's your homework. I've, I've, uh, I'm putting. I, I I know I'm not dressed like it, but I'm I'm an authority figure, and uh, and you will you will you will go listen to Iron Age, or I'll or I'll. Or I'll grapple you in a in a in a Sodom Genesis XIX rash guard. <laughs> All right. All right. So, hey, anything anything you wanna anything you wanna plug? Anything you're doing these days? Anything you're you know you just wanna talk to the chat about? Let the chat know to close things out. Anything you wanna say that's going on? Well, um, I guess I'll say that you know got a lot of. A lot of music, a lot of songs um, in the tank. So keep your eyes peeled for what that uh, what that becomes. And uh, I think everybody here, especially that enjoyed Nightmare Logic, will really really like it. It's kind of the next next thing. Uh, spent a lot of time working on it the last few years. Um, I'm doing another side project, just kind of while I wait for things to fall into place. Um, with all that, that'll be more thrash. It's a little more down tuned uh, to, to D. So I'm gonna do a band that'll be coming out pretty soon. So I got some stuff coming. So okay. people like Nightmare Logic and like all the Power Trip stuff, then they'll they'll be excited for what's what's coming because uh, can't say exactly what it what it is or isn't gonna be, but um, the plan right now is for it to you know continue. So. That's all I can really say right now. All right, I like. Hey, hey, I like it. I like. Uh, I like the cryptic. I like the cryptic. You know, it's. Uh, it's. It's good. I. You know, all. All. All I needed to hear is. Is. Uh, is. Yeah. Yeah. There's something coming. So that's all I need to know. And. Uh, maybe something coming. Maybe. And, maybe. Maybe. Maybe eleven songs. Maybe not. But probably eleven or, or more. Eleven. So. <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah. All right. They're. They're. Uh, I think they're fucking awesome. So, well, if I think they're fucking. Awesome, then, you guys might think they're fucking awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna say until until you until you until you make some not awesome music, uh, I think we're just gonna have to. Uh, I think we're gonna have to take your word on that one. Yeah. And thanks for thanks everybody for the kind words and for having me. Thank you guys for having me. And uh, I'm just honored that everybody is a, a fan of anything I've done. And uh, you know, it makes me really proud and happy. So thank you guys. You guys are awesome. Awesome. Thanks so much.